kids are gonna get crazy! <laughs> Most everyone's mad. Everybody, hopefully you didn't miss me too much. Welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. And what a big week have we got today. In fact, uh, this is going to be a pretty exciting episode with a lot of very informative and very exciting news that we would like to share and especially to go and discuss. So, um... Basically, with all this big news, I knew that this is not a thing that I could do alone. In fact, I brought a buddy on board that after his amazing work that he has provided for me in part 11 of Animation Look Back, Walt Disney Animation Studios Plus, and all the other parts as well, I might as well bring him on board once again, you know, just a, uh, just to show a little bit of, uh, of appreciation for his work and also, you know, just to have fun around here. So please welcome back everybody from the YouTube channel, Toucan, uh, Toucan LDM, Logan Miller. Logan, what is up, dude? I am still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly <laughs> enough. Good. Yep. Don't feel as tired, but hey, I'm just, I'm used to it at this point. <laughs> but all is really well. All right, that's good. You've been getting your rest, like everything is going all good on your end? Yep, I just drink my five-hour energy. This is not paid promotion, but I figured why not? <laughs> but yes, I am active, doing well, hyper, and yeah, yes. You know, you know, to be very honest, Logan, I have never once in my life actually taken any of those kinds of uh, energy drinks, like ne like no five, no five hours, no monster drink. I never took took any of those, honestly. Like, um, it works. I mean, it does get the job done. I mean, it helps like a little bit, but I much rather prefer drinking those than monster. I tried monster. It's eh, but yeah, I've been used to like five hour energy ever since high school when I used to do cross country and track. So. Yeah, all right. after somehow. Yeah, that's coffee. true. Oh, <laughs> you you know, cr you know, like a crazy fact about me is that never once have I really drank coffee. I'm not a coffee person, actually. <laughs> See, I used to be like that, but my friend introduced me, introduced me to coffee two years ago, and I couldn't, I haven't stopped since. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I guess there's like a certain moment. I don't know. Maybe it's it's not my time yet, but we shall see. But well, you just you wait. <laughs> probably but it's not the time for coffee it is the time for the podcast so i would like to ask you logan are you ready for today's episode of animat's crazy cartoon cast yes and yes, yes. that is perfect now chat wall are you ready for today's episode of animat's crazy cartoon cast let me hear it folks are you prepared are you set Yes, it looks like everyone is ready. That is beautiful. That's what I love to hear. So with all that said, let us now go and get things started. And with the first story that I have today, this is probably, debatably, the biggest entertainment news that has occurred this week. One that many may say will change the course of entertainment and how things will go from here. Um, so I guess we might as well go ahead and start by getting into it immediately and start talking about Disney. More specifically, now that Disney Plus and their streaming services are going to take priority. Now, the big news that did occur this week is the fact that uh, the Walt Disney Company has revealed on Monday that they are changing their business strategies in order to go and prioritize their streaming services to make them more of an important factor in their business. So stuff like Disney Plus, uh, uh, Hulu, as well as ESPN Plus. And uh, one major thing that they have done is that they created a brand new division called the Media and Entertainment Distribution Group, which will be led by Kareem Daniel. And uh, by the way, Kareem Daniel, if you guys don't know, he has been a Disney veteran working at the company for many years. In fact, uh, his most recent position that he had before, like he, he took a lot of leadership positions, but uh, before this, he was actually the uh, president of Walt Disney Imagineering, where he kept an eye on the creations of many big projects that they had in recent years like Toy Story Land and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. 
And uh, to go into more specifics with um, what this uh, distribute with uh, this uh, new division is going to do, I'm going to I'm going to read a little bit from my source here on Variety, as it states. <clears throat> Uh, Daniel's division will be responsible for P&L management, distribution, operations, sales, advertising, data, and technology functions globally for Disney's content production, in addition to managing other operations for Disney streamers and US TV networks. And um, they also mentioned that when it comes to the other leaderships as well, like the ones who are in charge of like the studios, uh, mainly in the entertainment division, like with um, with uh, Walt Disney Studios, Walt Disney Animation Studios, Pixar, uh, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and all that kind of stuff. Apparently, they're still going to be intact. The leadership is still the same. Uh, the most that it has changed within the company outside of this, uh, apparently, is regarding the Disney parks where apparently they are separating the Disney Parks Division and the uh, International Operations, where both of them, instead of connecting to each other, they're going to speak directly to the CEO, Bob Chapek. Uh, but going more into the new division led by Kareem Daniel and uh, their prioritization of their streaming services, uh, we got a big quote here coming from CEO Bob Chapek as he states, Given the incredible success of Disney Plus and our plans to accelerate our division, our our uh, direct to consumer business, we are strategically positioning our company to move effectively uh, to support our growth strategy and increase shareholder value. Managing con uh, managing content creation distinct from distribution will allow us to be more effective and nimble in making the content consumers want more. Uh, delivered in the way they prefer to consume it. Our creative teams will concentrate on what they do best, making world-class franchise-based content, while our newly centralized global distribution team will focus on delivering and monetizing that content in the most optimal way across all platforms, including Disney+, Hulu, ESPN+, and the coming Star International Streaming Service. Uh, we also got a big quote uh, coming from Kareem Daniel himself, as he states... Uh, I am honored to be able to lead this new organization during such a pivotal, a pivotal and exciting time for our company, and I'm grateful uh, to Bob for giving me the opportunity. It's a tremendous privilege to work with the talented and dedicated teams that will compri uh, comprise this group, and I look forward to a close collaboration with the outstanding and increasingly successful team of creative content leaders at the company, as together we build on the success we've already achieved in our DTC and legacy distribution business. So that is quite a mouthful, but the big thing to take from all this is that Disney will now be prioritizing a lot more on their streaming services like Disney+. Plus. Uh, Logan, I know that is actually quite a lot, but I would like to know your take on this. How do you feel about Disney's new strategy? I mean, more Disney the better. And it's pretty obvious, like, nowadays, like, stream, streaming is the big thing, because I used to be at the point where I wasn't really into streaming services as much like other people were when it comes to, like, Netflix, Hulu, and all that stuff. But now, lately, ever since I don't, don't have, like, cable anymore, and I just feel, I feel like streaming is now the big deal, because that's where, like, everybody's go-to when it comes to, like, watching their shows and basically all that stuff. And I mainly use streaming just to, like, multitask as I'm working on other projects. So, honestly the more the better when it comes to like seeing more stuff towards like these streaming services like Disney Plus, Hulu and all that stuff. Cause I got that bundle where you get have access to Disney Plus and Hulu and ESP, ESPN Plus, even though I haven't used ESPN Plus yet. So <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely down for it. And um, I, I know, I mean, yeah, really. <laughs> I'm trying to think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're ready for it. You're ready for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm a loss of words. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing that Disney. Pl I know I'm not the first person that says this, but the main issue that Disney Plus is suffering right now is the less of like more more original content they have because, yeah, they got stuff like the Mandalorian, but that's really it when it comes to like the more high tier, bigger shows they got there that people are talking about. I mean, yeah, there's stuff like Muppets Now. The Imagineering Story, uh, High School Musical, Musical, and all those shows. I mean, they're fine, but they're nothing like... Th it's like a must-do when it comes to like, Disney+. Plus. And I feel like Disney needs to have more shows related towards that. And I know they're supposed to have like Falcon, the 
Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and uh, Wonder Vision, but those won't be coming anytime soon. So, um, well, the more... they they say Wanda Vision is actually going to be coming up soon. Actually, like that's going to be think... coming. Yeah, like uh, apparently, like the big ones that are at least coming out this year that they are heavily promoting are going to be well, Mandalorian season two is actually going to be coming out. Oh my god, I just realized it's going to be coming out in a few weeks. Uh, then I you know. got Wanda. <laughs> uh, Wanda Vision is going to be coming out later this year. And then you also got, um, well, of course, Pixar Soul. So those are going to be the big things that are going to be coming out for the rest of 2020. So just want to clarify right. on that. And what I mean by originals, I mean like products are like made specifically for Disney Plus, not like films are meant to be in theaters, but then been pushed you with streaming because of you know the vi the COVID and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, anything, I mean anything really. It's more like the execution, how these shows are going to be and all that stuff. So what do you think, Matt? Yeah, I mean, like, w one thing to go and clarify, like, I, I do understand, like, your criticism of, like, less original content. And, and I would say that technically you could be wrong on that because Disney has been supplying a good bunch of original content. It's just that the grand majority of them are documentaries or reality type shows like stuff for uh their their national geographics channel or more like these like little documentaries here and there like the imagineering story or into the unknown for example it's just that yes there are there's a good bunch of original content they're just really not that noteworthy and not necessarily the kind that really is a massive reason for people to go get Disney Plus. It's like, we need to get Disney Plus because that's the only place where we would get that. So far, the only one that we have right now that does count as a show that would be like that, or anything that would be like that, is um, it, it is just um, The Mandalorian. And I mean, technically, we do have like the other movies as well uh, that are kind of like crawling into Disney Plus one by one. Like, we, we already got several that were supposed to be in theaters, but managed to find their way on Disney+. Plus. Like, this year, we got a whole bunch of those. Like, um, the one and only Ivan, Artemis Fowl, uh, the Mulan Hamilton. remake, and Hamilton as well. And then we're also going to get Soul. So, like, it, it is slow. It's like... I guess you could say when it comes to original content, Disney had a slow start because they only had The Mandalorian, but now more more and more we are going to see uh, yeah, and these I, content. Oh. Yeah, and oh, sorry, I was going to say, like, and that's understandable because Disney Plus is still new. I mean, it's going to be one years, one years old at this point. Mm -hmm. So they're still, like, breaching out and, like, having, like, a nice slow start just to get, like, people warm up with, like, all their contact and all that stuff. And I'm not saying, like, all the original stuff right now is bad. Like, I do, like, enjoy, like, I mean, I haven't really got a chance to, like, watch their, like, documentary series besides the Imagineering story, but, I mean, I do appreciate them for, like, more variety in their content, mm -hmm. and I just like to see, like, more, I'm just saying, like, in compared to, like, other streaming services where they got, like, their big, well-known shows that are, like, stream exclusively on there, like, when it comes to, like, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and all that stuff, like, Disney Plus, yeah, you got, like, all their legacy content and some unique original stuff but i feel like they can do a little bit more better when it comes to like in the next couple of years which given the story that seems to be the case yeah uh, well then again like you could say that they also have they also have like the fox content especially like one of the biggest marketing campaigns that they have done for it was to go and promote the simpsons but then again how long can that really last to bring in more people to say like come to disney plus because we got simpsons uh but one thing i will say though that uh, i completely understand why they had to do this is mainly because Disney is pretty much at a position where they have no choice but to adapt to our modern times. Because let's face reality, let's face the facts. We don't know when this pandemic is going to be over. We don't know when there's going to be an effective vaccine that will be available to everyone around the world that will officially mark an end to this pandemic, and then we could slowly but surely go back to the things uh, that used to be. We don't know when that's going to happen. So for now, the best thing we can do is to just adapt during these times. And that's exactly what Disney is doing. Because let's be honest, most of their major businesses, they heavily rely on things that 
are against some of the guidelines we have to follow now, especially social distancing. Like Disney has already lost billions of dollars on their theme park industry. In fact, Disneyland has yet to be reopened and we don't know when that's going to be reopened again. Not to mention that we also have like the movies that have been constantly delayed. And just like how we mentioned, uh, ended up being thrown into Disney Plus because we don't want to keep pushing them back to like 2021 or 2022. So... The only thing Disney could do right now is to just move up Disney Plus as a bigger priority because that's their only main source of revenue that they could get right now. Like the best way that they could get uh, some profit from people while they can stay safe at home. Like to like in order to capitalize on the situation to make the most out of what's happening of uh, having people to mainly stay at home. And if they want them to go and watch their movies, then they have no choice but to go and check out Disney Plus. So they'll have to have to make that uh, a major importance. And what's interesting is that I've noticed that there's a lot of people who are saying right now that Disney's business strategy, like the whole Walt Disney Company, they're starting to slowly but surely look more like Netflix's. That Disney, even Disney, is starting to become more like a company that is similar to Netflix. Yeah, that is true. And plus, I don't think it's really worth it to go see a theater just to watch New Mutants and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly forgot they did that because I'm so used to like theaters being closed. But yeah, I think it's kind of the point that, yeah, people are like more attached towards Netflix and all these streaming services rather than just like going to the theaters and just watch it from there. And I can definitely see why. I know people that are not really big fans of going to theaters anyways. And lately, I'm becoming in that same boat as well. I'd rather just, like, sit home and just, like, watch something uh, uh, either by myself or, or with family and friends. Just, like, a nice, quiet environment while watching this movie rather than just being in a theater with, like, you may never know who you come, come across in a the theater. Whether it be, like, this obnoxious person, really, uh, really annoying kids and all that stuff. I mean, me personally, I never had, like, a really bad experience in years, but... I did hear stories about others' bad theater experience because of these idiot people, and it's just you just you'll just surprised by that. And yeah, it sucks, but at the same time, it's like it is what it is at the time being because of this whole COVID situation. I mean, it just sucks, but as long as we get a vaccine about, it, then we just gotta like deal with it. It, it. Exactly. That that's the big thing that we have to do. It's that we have to go and adapt to the times we got to adapt to make sure we can minimize the damage to make sure we keep ourselves safe uh ourselves safe and everyone around us safe and going to the theater is kind of like a nightmare scenario it's kind of like the opposite of what you should be doing because when you think about a movie theater you think about like the fact that you're going in a small room you're going to be crammed up with a whole bunch of other people and you never know what they got and all you're doing is just sitting sitting there for like uh, more than an hour or two or even three just to go and watch a movie on the big screen. And that exactly. that's pretty much it. It's kind of an awkward and like especially in a pandemic point of view, it's more of a nightmare scenario. Like it is understandable that not necessarily all the like not all the countries or not all the states uh, have opened their cinemas yet or they had to close them back down again because of these current situations so that's why for disney their best option for now is just to put them to put all their content on disney plus and i'm just going to say right now i know that there's a lot of people that would state about uh, the marvel movie saying that well they have no choice but to put them in theaters mainly because of like contractual reasons and stuff like that but I'm just going to say right now, if nothing change, if things are still the way they are right now, like, uh, until like if in May, 2021, if, if like nothing changes with COVID, then I'm just going to say right now, Disney is going to heavily consider to move the Marvel movies, uh, or the new Marvel movies onto Disney plus. They're just going to give up and put black widow on Disney plus. I think like if things don't change the way they are right now, I think that is going to legitimately happen. And I can't really blame them if that comes to the case. I mean, I would have been down for that. 
Yeah, I, I mean, like, a lot of people were were already set up and ready to go and check out Black Widow, but, like, it, it's already been delayed to, like, a full year, and I don't see Disney delaying that whole thing again. They can't just move it all back to, like, 2022 or something, so the best they can do for now is just put it out somewhere, and I guess if it has to be on Disney+, Plus, even if it is, like, with uh, a premium fee or not, then... So be it. I, I I think like right now there seems to be a timer with many of these films at this point because they've already been massively delayed and I, I cannot imagine Disney delaying them even further than they are right now, especially if it's already costing them so much. Right. And I do get the premium access thing, but can it not be $30? Can it be like $20? Like, come on. I mean, I get why, but at the same time... See, I mean, yeah, I was just like, that just seems like a little bit too pricey if they went with that. But at the same time, yeah, these are big, bu there are big budgeted movies, so it is what it is. And it just sucks, too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, the more I think about it, the more that I realize that it is kind of unfair. The fact that they put Mulan at $30 on Disney+, Plus, like, compared to uh, something like Trolls World Tour or Scoob, that put it out on premium video on demand for like twenty dollars or so for like a, a rental fee of like twenty bucks, because yeah, like that worked out just fine. Yeah, that yeah that like some like especially trolls like did actually find some decent success with it, uh, but like the thing is that really is kind of stupid and messed up is the fact that like with Mulan you're technically just rent like technically you are buying the movie per se, but it's already on a streaming service that you're already buying. And it's not even going to be, like, that exclusive for that long. Like, pretty soon, they're going to, like, its time is going to be up. And then, on December, Disney is going to be putting it out there for free. Meanwhile, exactly. It's like, what's even the point? <laughs> yeah, and then, like, you, yeah, and some could debate, well, technically, the $20 fee for, like, Scoob and Trolls World Tour, well, that's because, like, that's just a rental fee. It's only, it's only there for, like, a day or two, and that's it. But... Even at that, like when Scoob actually put out like a whole purchase price, they only went for like twenty four ninety nine. So I don't know. I right. feel like I, I I really do feel like in a way, uh, di like P Disney really screwed people over with Mulan. And if they if they are gonna do that again, like maybe tw like twenty dollars would have been okay. Right, but then again, it's like I just feel bad with the people that actually had to pay thirty dollars to see that crappy movie. Yeah, but what can you do? <laughs> well, I mean, I kind of got my money's worth. Uh, like, for me, it's just, like, pay my $30, watch the movie, make a review, and hopefully the YouTube re revenue will make the money back. <laughs> See, it makes sense for you, but it's pointless for me. I mean, it just seems like, I mean, I get, like, why $30 wouldn't make sense if you are like, with a family. But if you're, like, just by yourself, it just seems like you could spend that $30 on, like, something else useful. Like, what's something that will cost $30? <laughs> uh, uh, a, a few months. Uh, almost um, a few months of Disney Plus. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and plus you got the original Mulan on there, so there you go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not a Disney live action rant. This is. Yeah, I just like to point that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I I know how you feel, and I think, and I don't think Disney is gonna do that again, especially with Soul. Um, that's coming out on Disney oh, Plus no, for. They they, they ain't doing it, and that could, like, a lot of people speculate that it could be a sign that Mulan was a flop. Yeah, and plus, people, have, like, give me, like, backlash for Disney for making that, pr like, price deal. Like, yeah, they, I feel like, I mean, it sucks that Soul is going to be, quote-unquote, free for Disney+, Plus, but at the same time, it's, like, it's probably for the best. I mean, I say, quote-unquote, because you still got to pay the $6 a month, but... Mm -hmm. But for the movie itself, yeah, it kind of stinks that it's... Now, see, if Soul was going to be released for like $30, then I would happily pay for that because oh, I know yeah. that movie is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. At least you, you, know, yeah, you, overall, you, you know you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, I would and you were gladly saying? pay the $30 for that. Oh, I was going to say like overall, yeah, I'm definitely down for making seeing new like exclusive content meant for streaming services. I mean, that will give me more time to work on my animations. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm actually at the point where I don't have the time to actually physically sit down and watch certain stuff. 
unless I know that it's going to be really important to me. Like if it's if it's like a show that I'm not really that invested in, but I still want to watch it anyways, I'll just have it on the side while I work on projects. So that way I'm not wasting too much of my time because I'm the type of person that hates to be lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd rather stay active. I'm doing other stuff because the more the more I procrastinate and all that stuff, the more I'll feel like crap and I'll hate myself for doing so. So, but uh-huh. that's just me. Yeah, um, but also, I do have a major million dollar question that I would like to ask you related to this news. I would like to know your opinion. Do you think other studios should do the same thing as Disney right now? Do you think like Universal, Warner Brothers, and uh, Paramount, and all those other companies, should they follow Disney's business strategy and start prioritizing their streaming services more so than just waiting for theaters to reopen to put out their movies, or just wait till it's safe to do more productions to do TV shows and stuff like that? How do you feel? Do you think uh, they should do the same thing? Honestly, if I know my history with Hollywood info, I say, like, let's see what one studio does. And if it's successful, then I feel like other studios should follow. Because it is kind of like a, I want to say it's risky, but at the same time, it is pretty, like, you're putting all your efforts to look to streaming service. So I feel like they should wait to see how well Disney manages in doing so. And if it is successful, then they should definitely consider doing it. Because you may never know, like, if all the studios do it all at once, then who knows how that's going to end up being. I mean, I'm not saying that's a bad thing if they start right away, but it's it all depends how well people are really going to buy into this. Then again, I would disagree a little bit, and I think, like, it would be a smarter strategy to immediately... Uh, get into this because like we are in the strip like we are entering in the streaming age and we like we already got the other companies starting out putting out their uh, streaming services like Universal just put out Peacock uh, you got Warner Brothers putting out HBO Max and then um, you got Paramount in which they're going to reboot CBS All Access and turn that into Paramount Plus so well and technically like the, you know, with the attitude of the wait and see kind of thing, like technically we already got that happening already with Netflix and Netflix so far throughout 2020, they've been doing pretty well for themselves. They have been fr- uh, they have been thriving. I mean, they they've had some setbacks as well when it comes to making productions and making original content. But so far, uh, their business is still going very strong. So technically, we've already gotten that wait and see attitude. And I, I, I honestly believe that um, if it's going well for Disney, then it shouldn't be too long. Maybe at the end of the year, even like we are going to see other companies try to do the same thing, like with Warner Brothers putting more uh, priority on HBO Max and stuff like that. In fact, like I, I would debatably say, like we are starting to see that a little bit. Like we are starting to see um, other studios trying to do the same thing, especially with Warner Brothers and HBO Max, where, um, uh, they already put out the witches onto, onto their streaming services, because I know that one was supposed to come out in theaters, but now they decided to say, screw it, and they're just putting it out on HBO Max, and that's, like, a big movie for them, like, it stars Anne Hathaway, it's directed by Bob Zemeckis, it was a pretty big feature, but... Now they're pretty much doing the Disney Plus route and using it as a tool to go and heavily promote HBO Max to see an exclusive big movie on their streaming service. Yeah, you you do make a great point. I didn't think about it like that way. I'm still kind of like new when it comes to like a whole like streaming service situation, like how they handle things and all that stuff. So that does make a great point. I just don't know, like, let's say they release like this movie that's like the budget is like over 100 100 million dollars like how would they get a profit out of that if not that many people if how how would they know how they get like their profits back from that it's complicated like even i'm still trying to learn and understand how they're trying to make profits but it's basically the same kind of algorithm as youtube where it's more out where it's more based on like the amount of time that people are watching the content that's what they value most because technically the revenue is coming from the the monthly or annual fees that they would go and get so that's why like it's still complicated it's still hard to really explain it's not necessarily about the views or how much money it made back but it's more rather 
um, the amount of time people are watching it and if it would gain more subscribers to go and check out more of that stuff. So it, it's gotcha. more that kind of thing. It, it's still very complicated to understand, but that's how they're... That, that, that that's uh how they would go and approach that situation from what i understand at least with netflix and i think um in that regard as well i believe netflix has already done major motion pictures like they've already done blockbusters uh, like correct me if i'm wrong but i, I believe they've already done like hundred million dollar movies actually yeah it could be right yeah i mean i haven't got a chance to like watch like most of their original movies but i am aware like some of them like that one Will Smith and Warlock movie, uh, I forget what it's called. Oh, but it's, like, it's, like, it's like Bright or something like that? Yeah, it's something like that, yeah. I, I think, I'm not sure if that was like what I put that in a category, but yeah, I'm aware of these movies. I just haven't got a chance to like sit down and watch it. But I wouldn't be surprised if that comes to the case. And plus, and like, when since HBO Max and Peacock were released this year, then yeah, I think in the future, we are going to see more movies like that coming directly towards the stream services as opposed to just going straight to theaters mm -hmm. so and, and and yeah so i'm definitely looking forward to it uh not much really has to say i'm just definitely looking to see what disney has to offer with these uh context streaming exclusively on their uh streaming services yeah it'll be interesting like for now i guess the best thing we got to do is just adapt and if Disney Plus is going to be their most important asset right now, more so than uh, their productions to put out in theaters or even their parks, then so be it. It'll be uh, like it'll give us more reason to actually have Disney Plus and to go and watch more of their content. Like I'm already like a after talking about this, like I I'm already set up to go and see uh, The Mandalorian season two. So I I'm already prepped up for that. Same here, man. Same here. <laughs> All right, so with that said, I'd like to go into the chat wall, and I want to ask you all, what do you all think about uh, the new strategy that uh, Disney is trying to do with their business, prioritizing their streaming services? Uh, do you think uh, it is a good idea, or do you oppose it? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Let me know what you all think about this. Ah, uh, even you understand the whole the the whole timing of all this. Even you're taking a, a drink break. <laughs> just I don't know, just a funny thing to point oh, out. Oh yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. I really have to go ahead and give props to Disney for ad uh, for adapting with our COVID-based times. I did enjoy uh, some of Disney Plus's original movies like uh, Hamilton, Candace Against the Universe, and to an extent, Noel. So I am curious to see what's coming up next, especially with Soul. And I have to agree with Logan here. If they do the premium streaming again, they should drop it. $30 for Mulan just feels like a massive ripoff, even for a Disney remake. Well, I want to say I drop it completely. Like I said, I just rather like the price to be a little bit more cheaper than mm -hmm. just thirty dollars. Yeah, like try try to go more reasonable, like either fifteen or twenty. That like at that point, <clears throat> it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Personally, I think it is for the best that Disney is focusing on Disney Plus the most. However, I definitely agree with you that Disney Plus needs more original content that's worth mentioning because outside of The Mandalorian, the only other ones that are worth mentioning are just WandaVision later this year, Soul, and the final season of Star Wars Clone Wars. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. I haven't I watched that show. I need to at some point. Uh, yeah, I, I have heard some uh, good things about it. Uh, yeah, well, and I mean, and I mean, so, like, technically we could throw in Hamilton as well. Like, that was also a major reason. Oh, yeah. Even though it wasn't meant for Disney Plus in the first place, but what can you do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it was something that was already finished, so they were pretty yeah. much desperate. Like, you remember when they were supposed to release that, right? It was supposed to be next year, wasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, like literally next year in October 2021. And yet we As got... we speak, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we got it during July 4th of this year. It's kind of like the... like It's honestly the most... Er the, the earliest that I've seen of like moving it forward. I, I don't know. Like even that shocked me. But hey, like now, now I got the rights to say that I've seen Hamilton with the original cast. <laughs> Same here. Uh, <laughs> let's see now. Uh, before that thing shall not be named happen, uh, what's your favorite theater 
uh, to watch animated features in? And can you name a few cinema chains in your area that's e that either don't exist anymore or still around? Also, I've just celebrated my birthday over two weeks ago, and it's only a few days before you. Keep up the great work, Animat. Oh, well, happy birth. Well, happy belated birthday to you, too. Um, well, I I'm in Canada, so we mostly have the Canadian chains. I think we used to have famous players, but that pretty much disappeared. Now, the only ones, well, at least around my area, the only ones we got are Cinema Guzzo and Cineplex. Like, those are the only ones. We don't, we don't, like, we used to have, like, some of the American chains, like AMC, but... Ultimately, I, I, I think um, I think it really is uh, Cineplex that kind of got a whole monopoly in terms of uh, Canadian movie theaters. What about you? Um, since I'm from America, the closest ones that are near me are Cinemark and Regal Cinema. And I like them both equally. I think Cinemark is much more grand compared to Regal, but I mean, a theater is a theater. There's... I mean, <laughs> yeah, I just true. go see a movie that just just go see it. Uh, sometimes, like if I want to see like a really like big, if I'm looking for a movie that I'm really like, really anticipated for, I usually go to uh, Cinemark because they have that XD uh, screen, uh, like you know, yes. like the really big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the like more the more premium viewing. Yeah, we got we got exactly, several of yeah. those. Yeah, we yeah, got. Like, oh. Yeah, go on. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say like the last movie I saw on that big screen was uh, Frozen Two, and it was definitely worth it. The movie itself was pretty good but just that experience is like really nice oh yeah no we we got some of those as well um well like uh, of course like since since it was made in montreal like we got uh, we got several imaxes so like if uh -huh. ever we want the big experience like we could go to imax uh but also like um there is there, like uh for the cineplexes like we we now got like these ultra avx experience which is pretty much like imax but at the same time they're also starting to put in like those 4d chairs i i don't know if i've told you this but you oh, you know yeah. those moving chairs mm -hmm. like i remember i went to go see onward on one of those chairs and oh my god like it's the same thing with you like the movie was all right but oh my god, it was just a trip with that with that freaking chair. Every time when a moment of action occurs, like it literally brings you into the action down to the point where it's like, like I like it made me feel concerned. It's like I don't want to join in the adventure. What is this? <laughs> See, I feel like if I was in that situation, I would be more distracted by the chair than I am with the movie. <laughs> I mean, the most I've done those is like at theme parks with when it comes to like Shrek 4D. Yes. And that's about it <laughs> i mean it must be really cool but yeah it's been like years since i've seen a movie in imax like literally years but yeah, yeah it's been it's been a while for me too i think the last well like i mostly go to the cinema uh, to the to the cineplex they don't have imaxes but the last movie i think i saw in imax was probably incredibles 2 i believe because they were having oh, like nice. a special presentation yeah, I just saw that in just an ordinary screening. Nothing special, but still fun. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, let's see our next comment here. I'm a little skeptical if this is a good idea or not. I am glad I got Disney+. Plus. Uh, the right stuff is one of the best things to watch on the streaming right now, uh, even though that National Geographic's... Oh, even though that's National Geographic's and not Disney. Uh, I just hope that they were 50% effort into movie theaters and 50% into Disney+. Plus. I don't want to lo lose seeing movies with my friends as a result of having movies being more convenient. And also the one and only Ivan is an amazing movie. Definitely check it out. Well, technically, I have seen reports that Disney did comment on that. And technically, they're not giving up on movie theaters. They never said that they're stop. That, that they never said that they're going to stop distributing movies on the big screen. They're just putting Disney Plus more of an importance that they realize that it's now a more important business than ever, considering the the times that we are in right now. So I just want to oh, clarify yeah, sure. that that like even yeah, just because Disney is um, prioritizing Disney Plus and their streaming services more, that doesn't necessarily mean they're fully giving up on movie theaters. For sure, yeah. And plus, they don't want to give like backlash if a movie does release in theaters. Yeah, exactly. They do, yeah, they don't want to open that can of worms. They don't want another. Yeah. They don't want another controversy like they did when they opened Disney World. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, so, um, all, all right. I'll read one more comment before we jump on to our next story. Uh, per, uh, it's good to see that Disney isn't full-on stubborn old people and can actually change. Focusing more on their streaming services like Disney Plus and Hulu is a good move right now, but we still have to wait for Disney to release more of their original content uh, for a long time. I'm still waiting for the next season of The Mandalorian, darn it. J a few more weeks, dude. few more weeks. That's few all weeks. That's all you need. Just a few more weeks and then you're going to get more Mandalorian. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Like, you'll, you'll get your fill of Baby Yoda memes pretty soon with a child. Yep. Either you'll be excited for it or be annoyed by his presence. It's yeah. the internet. You may never know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's either one or the other at this point. Hey, I'm, I am got, I mean, I'm down for more Baby Yoda. I mean, I literally got like two figures in my collection, which I could grab them right now, but eh, it's too far. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. It. It's just you, you don't have the force, so it's not like you can get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And speaking of Disney Plus, that should actually go and move on to our next story because, um, as we mentioned, one of the one of the upcoming projects that is now officially on Disney Plus is going to be Pixar's Soul. And uh, in order to go and fully mark the occasion, they decided to go and put up a brand new trailer for the film. And um, I will say right now, for the most part, it is things that we have already seen. But there's also some new things that they have revealed regarding the movie. So with that said, let's go ahead and check out the trailer, or the second trailer to be precise, for Pixar's Soul. Disney and Pixar's Soul, streaming on Disney Plus December 25th. Music is all I think about. From the moment I wake up in the morning, to the moment I fall asleep at night. I was born to play. It's my reason for living. Hello? What the... This weed, the council. There's a soul missing. Is this heaven? No. Is it H E double hockey sticks? Hell, hell, hell. Quiet coyotes. <laughs> no, it's the great before. This is where new souls get their personalities, quirks, and interest before they go to Earth. Here we are. Don't worry, you can't crush a soul here. That's what life on Earth is for. Whoa. It's my life. Can you help me get back? Come on. This won't be a disaster, that's for sure. You're out there somewhere, little soul. Life is full of possibilities. You just need to know where to look. Don't miss out on the joys of life. <laughs> like, uh, pizza. I can't smell. We can't... We can't taste either? All that stuff is in your body. No smell, no taste... Or touch. See? Okay, I get it. Disney and Pixar's Soul. Get ready. Your life is about to start. Start streaming December 25th. And that was the second trailer of Soul. And um, I I'm sure you've probably seen the first trailer, Logan. But um, how do you feel about this uh, new trailer? What do you think of it? It just makes me more excited to see this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, this is definitely a film that I'm definitely looking forward, for, forward to because it's more like seeing more original content from Pixar as opposed to seeing more of a typical sequel and all that stuff. But yeah, this is definitely looking something that I've been like wanting to see for like a while. And plus, it's Peak Doctor. You can't go wrong with his films. 
Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, say I, I'm on the same boat as you, actually. Like this, this I would debatably say uh, has always been my most anticipated animated film of this year. I was always excited to check it out, and uh, seeing the first trailer, it really did hype me up so much. And uh, when it comes to the second trailer, yeah, it it, it actually did its job. It it has actually hyped me up a bit more to go and see it even though there are a few things about it like we already know about but um the main goal of what it's trying to do is really expand upon what it wants to mainly present and um it's actually two major things that they want to go and show people regarding soul and that is the world of what is now known as the great before where souls become you know that's where they find their identities before uh coming into earth and then there's also the message uh the message of like pursuing your passions be who you want to be like to really uh get out there that's like the big thing that they want to sell and i'm glad that they actually have those intact but i think that's probably the new big thing uh that they have fully present to us actually um is really expand more on the world that uh jamie fox's character and where he would go and meet up tina fey like to show us like this whole world of the great before and even expanding upon it like showing us that there's still going to be some more uh some more things happening like when you enter into the real world so it may like i don't know what's going to be the ratio between the real world and the great before uh like i i don't know how it is but uh, I will say, maybe it might not be a case of The Princess and the Frog where uh, Jamie Foxx's character is mostly going to be this blue blob and, like, maybe he will be more, like, as his black self more so than just, like, the little blue blob that we have seen because I, I, maybe you have heard of it, but, like, there there have been some backlash already that uh, people have accused Soul of, like, doing that kind of uh, stereotypical thing with, with other movies like The Princess and the Frog or Spies in Disguise. Yeah, I was aware of it, but I didn't really think about it until people brought it up, and it's like, yeah, that's pretty true lately with, when it comes to these animated films surrounding around black characters, and... Yeah, it sucks, but I mean, you're still getting like an African American character representing this film as a main character, so that's a plus. But yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it is Disney's first, uh, and this is actually Disney's first uh, movie that stars a black character, actually. I mean, like, they've had people of color before, like, with um, with Coco, of course. Well, I mean, Coco, like, it's it's all, like, an all-Latino cast. Uh, but this is the first time where, like, and, and, and I mean, so, some people could say, well, there, there are black characters in Pixar films before, like Frozone. But, the, like, this is the first time where the main character is black. So okay, that, that is something to note. I was confused for a second. When you said Disney's first black character, I was like, wait, do you mean Pixar? <laughs> oh yeah, Pixar. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, I was. Wait, what? <laughs> no, I knew what you meant after you kept on going, but yeah, that is very true. And I, yeah, um, I'm trying to think what I was gonna say about the subject, but I definitely do like how they're gonna like execute and going by what you said about like the world building, all that stuff. Like, it is definitely imaginative, and it reminds me a lot of of uh, Inside Out. Mm -hmm. Just go like the world environments, and plus it's coming from Peak Doctor himself. But I'm sure it'll do like more with it and how, how would you describe those line characters like are they like the head the rulers of this world or something like that or yeah they look like the head honchos or at least the people who are organizing everything but i i really do like those characters mainly because they really do emphasize the art style that the movie is going for and funny thing is is that even though it's mainly about life and stuff like that um, it's, you know, another movie that I would say is very comparable, um, like another Pixar film that's very comparable to Soul is, uh, Coco, because it is very music-based, and it's mainly because of the art style, because you can actually see that art deco, uh, that art deco style, uh, jazz form of, uh, of art style that is actually prominent, and, 
like that that that's where you actually see like those line characters or uh the art style of it like the use of free form lines and the way that they they use it to represent characters like i find that very creative and even the way that they presented uh that they present the animation is actually really really nice and i love to see how they would go and expand it and like the probably like a new highlight that we have seen in there is the way that they showed that like those line characters can even get into the real world like you got that one character that's going around with his cockney accent it's like i'll find you little so make sure you go back to the great before yeah when i saw that bit in the trailer i feel like i don't want to say he's going to be like the villain of sorts but i'm afraid like they're going to go with that route of having a, like a villain of sorts because mm. I mean, I could be wrong, but just like the way he's like shifting around, like looking around, trying to find him and all that stuff. It's, it's giving me like, I hope they're not going with that direction and making him like the villain or anything. Because that's what Pixar works best when they don't feature like a villain of sorts. Not to say like their villains are bad, but I kind of like it when it's just like an, a slice of life for a tale. Like characters going, like trying to find the motive in order to like, uh, so, like go through life just like in general. But again, I could be wrong. I'm just basing just for like that few couple of shots of him like being like shifty and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But speaking about the art, holy crap. <laughs> like, I'm just surprised how like realistic it looks in a good way. Like, I'm not really a big fan of when animated films try to go for a more realistic approach because for the most part, they tend to go look uncanny. Like a good example I can think of is the early Shrek films. Oh, I mean, not yeah. to say they're bad, but I just don't like how realistic they try to pull off these characters. It just makes it look uncomfortable. But mm -hmm. I get it. That's like early CGI, but still. But going to this, like, it looks so realistic, but yet you can definitely tell it's like more... It's definitely making a cartoon realistic in a great way because it doesn't seem like too distracting and the characters do look like they're like animated in a mm -hmm. cartoony way, which I really admire. So I was just like amazed, like when I see like those backgrounds, how detailed they are. And it's not so bad to the point where I know like a lot of people complain in The Good Dinosaur where like the atmosphere looks so amazing, but mm -hmm. yeah, you got these cartoony looking characters, which I honestly didn't find that an issue, but I can definitely see where people are coming from. But I feel like so perfected that in a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because like you could tell the, the backdrop, like the environment and even... Uh, I would debatably say the cinematography, like the camera effects, are very much realistic. It's almost like you could debatably say is live action. But then you look into the, the characters themselves and how they're animated. Like, th there is that good blend of like, you know, you could tell that it's a cartoon. You could tell that it is animated. But they don't push the design too far where it looks cartoony. Like, even though... <coughs> excuse me even though like it's in a realistic backdrop the characters don't look out of place in their respective environment and that's where it actually works that's how you could tell um that the animate that the animation style it actually works out very well and it actually makes it visually uh appealing it's the fact that it may like somehow pixar did manage to find a way to take realism and actually make that beautiful where like it, it has become an art style in itself and it actually captures this um you know kind of like this urban area of new york city show like showing people's passions and stuff like that it actually works out uh to its advantage and that's just in the real world like we have yet to even get really more in depth into like the great before and stuff yeah i definitely like the color vibe they bring into it. it's like the light blue atmosphere and all that stuff i really do mm -hmm. like that atmosphere look and i like the cute designs of the souls themselves i thought yeah they look basic but they still look presentable at presentable and all that stuff i find that a really good character design there and there's really not much i can else to say about like the atmosphere itself in that world because it's more like i gotta like wait to see what else they gotta do with it because i'm sure they're saving like the best once the movie is actually released they don't want to show too much Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely agree with you there. But I think, like, the simplicity of, like, the soul characters, like, that that, that would be kind of the point. Because, like, you got to start them off as simple, and then they got to go and find their identities before, like, they go into the real world and stuff. Like, it, exactly, it is kind yeah. of like a clever tactic that they did there. 
Uh, but yeah, overall, yes. th this has definitely made me more excited, even though like a lot of the stuff, it's like, yeah, I have seen it before. I've seen the gag of like 22 slapping around uh, uh, J Jamie Foxx's character's face. What's his name? Yeah, by the way, what's his name again? I just need to double check on it. Uh, did, did he did they actually mention? Uh... Oh, Joe Gardner. OK, yeah, Joe Gardner. Just I, okay, I keep gotcha. on forgetting. But yeah, so like. Yeah, we've already seen the that that gag before. Like we've seen all the setup, but so far the things that they are showing, um, it is very much exciting. And so far, I just want to say right now, like um, one thing that's also really hyping myself up is so far we have heard early reviews of it because it did premiere at the uh, British film uh, at the BFI Film Festival, like in London. And so far, the early reviews that we have gotten for it. Some people are even going as far and say that this is one of uh, one of Pixar's best films. Like they're saying, it really is that good. So uh, a lot of people are already stating the the hype is is like justified. So already, I'm excited to check this one out. Yeah, after hearing that, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And plus, it's going is Pixar going back to their roots. And that's why I said earlier is like. I much prefer Pixar making more original films as opposed to making sequels because with their sequels, with the exception of Toy Story 2 and 3, I feel like they're good, but they're not like memorable good. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some things I'll like in like previous sequels. Like I will forever love the Jack-Jack versus Raccoon scene in The Cripples 2. But other than that, it's like, it's not films I'll like go back and rewatch again and again. Well, but, yeah well sorry sorry uh oh you're good no but one thing i will say is it's just like the problem is not necessarily the sequels themselves because like i really do like even the ones that people criticize uh a, a, a good amount like with the exception of the cars franchise like i really like incredibles 2 and i love and like i i even consider toy story 4 as good as like toy story 2 and 3 but oh. um the thing is is that um, Pixar has already set themselves like at such an incredible, unmatchable standard to the point that like trying to continue their stories like would be impossible. They're kind of like built to create original stories and like sequels are not necessarily their forte. They're not necessarily oh, no. at their strongest when it comes to making sequels with a few exceptions. So that's why, like, I, I, I do agree that technically, like, even with Incredibles 2, it's, it's nowhere near in the same leagues as the original. But um, it, it's just because, like, Pixar is just so amazing at their craft that even, like, in, like well-made, enjoyable films like uh, Incredibles 2 or, to a certain extent, Toy Story 4 would be considered lower standard than their usual stuff. Right. And like I said, I'm not saying like the sequels are bad. I just feel like they can do a lot more better. With oh, yeah. Films. Yeah. They're, they're but... Yeah. And, and I would even debate like even Disney animation would be the same thing. Like I really do like Frozen 2. I really do like Ralph Breaks the Internet. But yeah, but still, I do think they're at their best when they're making original content. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly, the only thing I really like about Ralph Breaks the inter Internet is the Disney princesses scene like that last scene with them like saving ralph is like oh so good <laughs> <laughs> but yeah overall yeah like the latest se sequels are just like they're like i said they're good but they're just not rewatchable good mm -hmm. yeah but yeah exactly. going back to but going back to soul yeah i am definitely hyped for this one it definitely looks like it's going to be pixar's next best film since coco and that's all i really gotta say i'm definitely looking forward to it i'll definitely gonna watch it when when it's released on Christmas, and I'm definitely going to enjoy the heck out of it. Or should I say, H E double hockey stick? Help, you know. Help, 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 help. help. <laughs> that was Coy a Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, oh, well, I mean, like, it's, well, at this rate, it doesn't seem like we're going to be seeing our families for Christmas. So, probably the best thing we can do is just going to be watching Soul on Christmas Day exclusively on Disney Plus. So with that said, I'd like to go into the chat wall and I want to ask, what do you all think about the second trailer of Soul? Did you guys enjoy it? Did you guys uh, get more hyped up from seeing it? Are you a little more disappointed or are you less interested in seeing Soul? Let me know what you all think about this. All right, so um, let's see what we have here. Um, 
I don't have a lot to say about this trailer, but it's nice to see that we will get more of Joe in the human world and seeing a bit more of the great before. As for what Logan said, I wouldn't say Soul, uh, Soul the I wouldn't say the Soul counter character is evil. Uh, I see it more as them trying to do their job since Joe seems to have been interested to go to the great before uh, before uh, he escaped. Also, uh, I'm beginning to have this theory where 22's consciousness is in the cat, which we do see later in the trailer. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised about that. Like, honestly, like, you do see in the promotional stuff that, um, you see Joe, and then you also see, like, his cat on the side. I wouldn't be surprised about that either. But one thing I... I... Think... What? Go on. Oh, no, I was gonna... Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, like, yeah, I didn't think about it either. Because I... That cat does appear a lot in, like, mark marketing and all that stuff, so... <laughs> Yeah, well, you never know, because technically we could say the same thing about the pig in Moana, but he was barely in that film. Yeah, talk about false advertisement there, Disney. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one thing I will say when it comes to that villain, we well, the, the quote-unquote villain that we talked about, I feel like it could go in one or two, one of two directions that Pixar already did. One, I feel like it's either they're going to go in the Wally route, where they're going to be like that Hal character, where they're, they're so committed to their job that they become the villain. Or it could end up like Gabby Gabby in Toy Story 4, where we think she she's the villain the whole time but in actuality like she you know she just she's just more aiming for her mission and even the characters are helping them out so it could go either way as long as we don't get like a predictable twist villain then i'm good with either way oh <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> maybe no maybe like the the whole twist is that it's not the um like maybe 22 doesn't become the cat the cat is just the twist villain this whole time oh my god see that <laughs> That will be stupid, but I'll love it. <laughs> think so. Oh my god, yeah. Speaking of stupid... Yeah, then again, like, I already went through such a stupid twist uh, in, in, a, in a movie with Serenity, so it's like, it's gonna be hard to top the stupidity of that kind I, of twist. I've seen you review that, and yeah, it's like... I can see where they're going with that, but wow. <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> like, there's not there's not enough scenes of Anne Hathaway as, as a femme fatale that would be enough for me to forgive this movie. <laughs> uh. Yeah, anyways, um... This trailer looks great. Pete Docter has proven to be uh, has proven before that he can make uh, creative animated films with Inside Out. The story seems very creative. The animation is amazing, and the character seems like uh, uh, the character seems like Abel. So overall, I'm hyped, and this will definitely be on my Disney Plus watch list later this year, alongside season two of The Mandalorian and WandaVision. So I already have my Christmas gift. Okay, that's nice. Everybody's uh, talking about the Mandalorian, so you know it's a big deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, how about this one? Yes. Uh, I'm exci I, I am excited for Soul. No surprise by my username, uh, which is Pixar Girl. Yeah, I agree. I think that Joe will be human a lot more than he is a soul. I'm pretty sure Pete Doctor wasn't in, in, uh, intending for that implication. Hell, uh, his daughter Ellie on Twitter is pretty liberal. Uh, I'm excited, and I think this probably uh, is the most experimental film they have made. Uh, most New York animation settings don't really stand out, making it more than just a, a generic city rather than a mix of sound patterns and atmosphere uh, that varies. And yeah, usually that can't... Yeah, that would be interesting to see um, how, Di how Disney can pull it off. Because usually... When they show a city, it, it can often just be a regular, regular old city. But trying to portray New York City is not always easy. Oh yeah, I, I mean, it was, everything that's going on right in that city is like, yeah. <laughs> that that will be interesting. As someone who, as someone who used to frequently go to New York City, I'd be interested to see like how they would that how they would go and pull it off. And so far. The only movie that I've seen that really captured it perfectly was, well, oddly enough, The Secret Life of Pets. So I, I, I'm interested to see uh, Disney, uh, Pixar's take on it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. 
I know that there's a pandemic, but honestly, this deserves to be shown on the big screen. The animation is spectacular, the Tina Fey blob is just a massive mood, and I love the moral of following passions. I definitely check it out with my friend if my friends isn't forcing me to watch all the Equestria Girl movies repeatedly, don't ask. Also, that no smell, no taste line, yeah, that sure aged well. Uh, yeah, and there's no touch as well. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is true. All right, I'll read one more comment before we jump into the uh, next story here. Oh, okay, I'll go with this one. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, after seeing the trailer, I can't say I'm more or less hyped in Soul's release. To be honest, Pixar's other movie released earlier this year was the one I was more hyped for, but still want to see Soul. Oh, yeah. I, I think we've all forgotten that Onward was released this year. So many things have happened during this pandemic. We forgot. It's like, oh, yeah, Onward was a 2020 movie. Exactly. That was like literally the last movie I saw in theaters before the pandemic happened. And it was like a nice, calming experience because it's one of those movies I rarely, I mean, it's one of those like rare movies I actually saw by myself because I usually go with like friends and families. But I was there. Uh, the theater. Cinemarks, they were like now selling like pizza at pizza, so you can like purchase there and like have like four slices. So I got that, sit on my seat and my recliner seat, eating my four pizzas, relaxing, and I was just having like a nice cozy time. But then <laughs> pandemic happens and I can't have that experience again. What yeah. Can you <laughs> oh well <laughs> eh, stuff like this happens but once again if you guys are excited to go and check out soul remember it's going to be coming out this christmas on disney plus and no premium fee this time hurrah <laughs> so it better be a good boy or little girl if not then you will get that premium feed <laughs> <laughs> no you'll just get the mulan remake again <laughs> oh that's even worse <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> All right, so with that said, let's go and jump on to the next story that I have over here. And this is going to be regarding an upcoming project. But what's most interesting about this one in particular is regarding who they have on board. And I don't know about you, but I personally feel like it's about time Sony gets to do something with a movie with this guy. And I'm talking, of course regarding Matthew A. Cherry working on a brand new movie named Tut. Yes, uh, Sony Animation is going to be collaborating with Matthew A. Cherry in order to create a movie that for now we know is called Tut, which is said to be an Afro-futuristic coming-of-age story of the boy King Tutankhamun. Uh, as it says here on my source on Variety, Based on an original idea from Cherry and Monica A. Young, the film will take audiences on a journey through ancient Egypt and celebrate a culture that introduces a world to countless modern conventions and technologies. And for those of you who don't necessarily know Matthew A. Cherry, uh, recently he has been getting some massive critical acclaim, especially regarding his animated short Hair Love, which um, many people could even debate that it is on par or even surpasses uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse as probably the best thing that Sony Animation has ever released. And so far, this seems to be the third project that Matthew A. Cherry is collaborating with Sony on. Uh, the one... Uh, well, of course, I mentioned Hair Love, but there is also going to be an animated series based on Hair Love that's going to be coming to HBO Max that's called Young Love. So now it looks like uh, they decided to go one step further with their collaboration with uh, Matthew A. Cherry by making a full-on movie. And we got a couple of quotes I would like to go and read here. Uh, one coming from Matthew Cherry himself stating, I am beyond excited to explore the magical world of ancient Egypt through the eyes of its youngest ruler, King Tut. I've always wanted to dive deeper into the legend of the boy king, and we can't think of a better partner to embark upon this journey with that, uh, with, oh, to embark this journey with than Christine Belson, Karen Tolliver, and the great people at Sony Animation. We also got another quote from Christine Belson, the president of Sony Animation, stating, uh, Matthew Cherry is one of today's most exceptional creative voices. We have the privilege of collaborating with him on his first animated short, which has since evolved, uh, since evolved into his first animated series, and we're proud to team up again on his first animated feature, Tut. Matthew has a bold and modern take on this story rarely told, filled with magic, music, and powerful themes, and we're thrilled that we get to go on this adventure together. 
So far, that seems to be the big thing that's happening right now is that Sony Animation is collaborating with uh, Matthew A. Cherry on a new movie. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, would you have uh, any thoughts on this? Um, I would say it's definitely well, de he de it's well deserved for him because even though I didn't get a chance to see that short in theaters, I did watch it when they uploaded to YouTube and it is a really great, great short. It is definitely cute and the animation is really great. The story is also really great and it's well deserved the winning of the best short at the Oscars. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to see more stuff from him. Um, yeah, I definitely like enjoyed the short and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, just that's all I got to really say of the matter. I'm just really curious to see where he's going to go with his own feature length film. Yeah, personally, I do feel like it is about time that Sony Animation does something with Matthew A. Cherry and like at least grab him before anyone else would. Like I know that Matthew A. Cherry has signed on with Warner Brothers to do a lot of television projects for both animation and live action as well. But at least um, in terms of like mainly doing animation stuff, especially for animated features, then um, like the Sony better had to go and take advantage of having Matthew A. Cherry, especially that he's becoming more and more of a prominent filmmaking voice as well. Because uh, funny enough, like when reading a little bit about his bio, apparently he started out as an NFL player and then I just, yeah. Yeah, because I was like looking at like his Wikipedia page and... I didn't realize he was a, he used to be a football player. That took me by surprise. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that surprised me as well. And then later on, he decided to go and pursue filmmaking and found some pretty solid success, especially um, with music videos as well. Uh, just actually it, on this article, I, it actually does describe that a little bit more. Um, where it says, like, apparently he collaborated, like, with Beyonce, with Snoop Dogg, with uh, Chloe hmm. X, Haley and uh many many more in fact uh, even doing like several episodes of uh, popular tv shows like uh mixed ish blackish uh saved by the bell the last og and the unicorn so like he's yeah. already done a lot of like smaller projects like music videos commercials uh episodes for tv shows and it's about time like now he gets to like now he's taking on like the bigger projects and it's going to be interesting to see what he would do with a movie, especially with um, like it, with his sensibilities. Like if he could bring on to uh, the things that really worked out with King Tut and apply that onto Oh, no. Well, the, the things that he has done for hair love and apply that to King Tut then honestly, we might actually have something very special here. I, I, I am curious to see what direction that he would go with it, especially with something that is more Egyptian-based. And I don't know about you, but it's been a very long time since we had a more Egyptian-centric animated feature. Like, the last time I can really remember seeing anything like that would be, like, that one moment in Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and that's it. Uh yeah, that's brief, though. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's gonna... it. I mean, like, can you think of anything <laughs> right. else recently? No, you're not You're not wrong there. <laughs> I'm trying to think, too, because the one I can think of at the top of my head is Prince of Egypt. But that was, like, what, 1998? Yeah, exactly. That Like, that was just, like, a long time ago. Right. I mean, I'm sure there's something out there that I'm not aware of, but... Yeah, hey, but it would be too small. Megan. It would be just, yeah, it's like small, in, yeah, probably just small indie projects or just like movies that are not really worth watching. So, so for sure. now, like in terms of animation, that's probably the most that we really did get. It's just Prince of Egypt, but I, I, I could imagine they could probably do something that could be very fascinating to watch, especially if they're promoting it as this afro-futuristic style feature so it might not just be like the typical egypt we all know so that, like they could go a little bit beyond that and especially with matthew cherry on board you never know if there is going to be like a strong uh social message that he might apply as well but also like especially the fact that he has mentioned that it is going to be another project he's working on that will star a kid um, one thing I would like to see if he can bring, if there is one thing that I would love to see him bring onto this King Tut movie, um, I want to see if he could bring the love, uh, the, the heart of hair love and put that onto this. 
you know, like try, try to have like, to see, I, I don't know how he would pull it off, but to have like some kind of like massively heartfelt moving moment to really get you into the scene and to really get you connected with these characters. I, like that, that's probably the one thing I really love the most about Hair Love. And if he would be able to bring that onto uh, Tut, then honestly, I would be all down for it. Yeah, he definitely nailed that in that shore. So I wouldn't be surprised if he would go in that direction. I mean, that would definitely make that film more unique compared to the other Sony films. Or Sony animated films, I should say. Mm-hmm. It, 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 Not that I've seen many, but... <laughs> oh, lucky you. I'm just saying, like, the last one I saw... <laughs> yeah, like, the most I've seen was, like, Into the Spider-Verse, and... Okay. I seen the first Hotel Transylvania for, like, the first half hour, and... Not gonna lie, I pretty much gave up after that because it literally gave me a headache. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I will admit the first, like you get to the first act, things are going okay. Then Johnny enters in. That's when you run. That's when you turn off the TV and you run. That's when it oh, goes yeah. into like Alvin and the Chipmunks territory. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the film more for its animation than I am with the story, but that's just me. But... Uh, yeah i mean like that that that's often what sony animation does is that often they value like it is one of those studios that can value style over substance yeah and honestly when they get when they do like stylized films they really make them pop out like like going back to spider-verse like oh yeah. that is definitely like a really great how it's executed like the comic book wor world and all that stuff like i definitely love the visuals for that film oh, and yeah. with their new film uh connected yeah connected right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I do like the character designs on that film i haven't really seen much of the trailers the most i've seen is just like promotional arts and all that stuff i mean i'm definitely really curious to like watch it if i've given a chance maybe i'll like it maybe i won't like it who knows I, yeah. like i said i just haven't really watched too many sony films because <sighs> most of them are not really that great to be honest <laughs> but <laughs> some people again, don't want to some people don't want to admit but <laughs> but some yeah. but they can have a few underrated gems like one one that i can recommend you right now surfs up like watch the first surfs up it's it's actually surprisingly good like the yeah, story yeah the co it. conceptually it's weak but the execution really makes it all worth it and plus the fact that it's from chris buck and ash brannon like you got the direct like you got the guy who would go and direct frozen and you got one of the directors of toy story 2 yeah i hear really great things about it. i just haven't got a chance to and after watching your review of it, they got like they set up like this documentary film. It's like that's that's unique for an animated film. Exactly. So you never know if maybe they will bring that kind of uniqueness onto uh, Tut, honestly. And if they can go and focus more on like the if it's going to be something like uh, Hair Love, and they can bring the fo and bring like that focus onto character building and make it more about the characters. Uh, plus bringing in like they're like bringing in an interesting art style that they could bring in maybe something that's more Egyptian based then it could be something worth watching because already I could just say they've already got my attention that they're going to make a movie with Matthew A. Cherry involved so I will give them that oh yeah and yeah I'll definitely be looking forward to it when the time comes for them to like release a film or at least release a trailer for it see if I'm interested and I'm sure it'll be great nonetheless um, I'm hoping it'll be in that 2D style as hair love, but I seriously doubt it. No. But you may never know. <laughs> no, yeah, they're, they're still it. doing 3D. Like maybe they'll find an interesting stylized 3D, but nah, they ain't going back to 2D just yet. Unfortunately, but what can you do? Yeah, exactly. Baby steps. Exactly. Yeah, just just baby steps. Like just get the most you'll get is 2D that looks 3D that looks like 2D. Exactly. Yeah. And I do like that style per se, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, overall, I'm definitely looking. Um, yeah, once the trailer's released, I'll just see how it's going to be executed, but I'm sure it'll be pretty well made. If, yeah, but we'll see. I'm just like, it all depends, like, if there's going to be, like, a lot of, like, studio meddling and all that uh, stuff. Because yeah. I know that happens sometimes, but you may never, I mean, you may never know. That, that is true. Like, yeah, I'm just hoping, like, Tony will give him, like, free control to do whatever he wants to do. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because that that yeah that could be like a massive catch because that's the thing with uh, with Hair Love is that technically the most that Sony Animation has done is just distribute it because it was all like technically Hair Love was already being made it was already being a thing of its own and then Sony just came in and just said hey can we put your movie in front of Angry Birds movie two and that's pretty much it so you never yeah. know if Sony will end up putting in some uh, some meddling on it so who knows. Yeah, I'm hoping not because I feel like Hollywood should learn a lesson by meddling too much with the with the artist's vision. Because for the most part, from my knowledge, they never turn out well. Like, yeah, you can like throw in like product placements, you can throw in like certain jokes and all that stuff, but in the end, people are gonna hate it. Mm -hmm. It just depends what you have in mind. Like, I feel like a good example for this, and I'm not sure if this is true or not, but Scoob, oh my god, that is so. I mean, the film itself is okay, but. You can definitely tell there's like some notes like, hey, insert this reference, insert this joke, get these people to voice the characters. And it's like, I feel like that's like a meddling film. Right yeah, there. that is a corporately manufactured film. That was a yeah, massive exactly. disappointment. Exactly. But like I said, the film's not bad. It's just, eh. <laughs> I'd even debate <laughs> that, honestly. Like, even yeah. I did, it's like, nah, th there's too much studio interference to the point that I'd even debate if I would say it's good. I mean, it's yeah. visually good, it visually looks good, but the movie itself, eh, yeah, but we're not here for Scoob, we're here for King Tut, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we don't know when that's going to be coming out, it has only been announced, but so far I will say, I am intrigued. They got my attention Same. with getting Matthew A. Cherry. And who knows how it'll go. Maybe it'll work, maybe it'll not, but we'll see. But how about you, people? Uh, what about the chat wall? I would like to know what you all think about this Tut project. Is this something that you would be interested in? Do you trust Matthew A. Cherry and Sony Animation to work on this project? Or do you think it might not necessarily work out? Well, let me know what you all think about this now. All right. Uh, let's see. I love the idea of a futuristic take on ancient Egypt. There is one problem. Uh, uh, oh, there is one um, problem I have with this, though. Why choose King Tut? His name rhymes with butt. Yeah, they'll probably... <laughs> well, I mean, like, what other, what other well-known pharaoh would you go with? I mean, what else is there? I mean, Paramount already got dibs with Cleopatra... And they're already getting, like, they're already getting the duo of Wonder Woman doing it. So, like, who else? I'm sorry, but that's, like, a random complaint to have. What? <laughs> we can't do, we can't do King Tut. It'll rhyme with butt. <laughs> We're going to get too many parodies that will be King Butt. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm just going to say right now, like, yes, as much as we do trust Matthew A. Cherry working on this, how much you want to bet they're going to do that joke? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised, especially coming from Sony. I'm sure they'll make, like, many jokes related to that. <laughs> they uh, might. Maybe not Maybe not a whole lot, but I might expect at least one tut rhymes with butt joke somewhere. Yeah, but, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, this may sound controversial, but I wasn't the biggest fan of Hair Love when I first saw it. Uh, when I first saw it there. Oh, when I first saw it, there was something about the father that rubbed me the wrong way. But as for this movie, it sounds interesting. I'd like to see where they go with this since it won't be the first time that King Tut has been adapted into animation. Uh, nor did he make an appearance. Uh, not only did he make an appearance in Mr. Peabody and Sherman, but there was also an animated series back in the early 2000s called uh, Tuttenstein. I've never heard of that show. Have you? I didn't know it exist. The most I know, the, the last thing I heard from like the word King Tut was from this. So do you know uh, Yogi's Gang? That old Oh, universe? God, I yes. I remember that first episode, they mentioned King Tut by name, but they pronounced it as King Tut, Tut Tut Tut. That sounds random to bring up. That's like, okay, yeah. But <laughs> I never heard anything else related to that besides that mention in that Yogi Gang special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. All right, let's see. Uh, please, please give me more black slash people of color representation in animation. We're getting it already with Soul, but I feel like with someone like Cherry on board, we'll be able to get even more. 
That is true. Hollywood has a huge issue with uh, whitewashing Egyptian characters, so this hopefully will be a breath of fresh air. Uh, the social commentary will be a nice touch too, because um, uh, oh, because uh, film oh, film is a huge influence on society, and it's about time we start using that uh, to use that for good rather than harm. Okay, yeah, that, you know, honestly, oh, also, hi, it's your girl, Mia. Oh, it's Mia, okay. <laughs> no, Mia's a, Mia's a friend of mine, so. Uh, anyway, she does actually bring up a very solid point, and that is going to be something uh, that we should see that, you know, that, that that's often been done, like, this is something that has rarely been done before, and that is, like, the correct racial representation of Egyptian people. Because, like, when you do think about Egyptian movies, even nowadays, they are often portrayed as just white people. Like, no, no matter what. Like, yeah, that is... Like, that I, is very true. I, I know it sounds like a weird complaint, but it is very true that technically, like, when you do think about, like, whatever Egyptian movie is out there, rather it be, like, the old ones, like, with the Ten Commandments or Cleopatra, or even, like, with some of the recent ones that they have done, like, uh, Gods of Egypt, for example... They usually portray Egyptians or Egyptian gods or whatever. They often show them as white people. So, and and yeah. they, they've already confirmed that, yeah, it's going to be more black people that will be represented, considering they said that this is going to be a more Afro-futuristic. So um, chances are we will be seeing a more prominently black cast in, uh, the, in Tut. So for once, it can actually work out that we're going to see the right race to represent uh, Egyptians, you know, it's not yeah. just going to be the typical white people being white people again. Exactly, and it, and I'm always down to seeing new movies or TV shows with an with an African American cast. I'll definitely love to see more of those in the future. Mm hmm. Oh, that that would be very nice. Uh, let's see now. The project seems very unique to me since uh, there are not a lot of animated movies that Egyp that's Egyptian themed like animated films that are Western themed. Uh, until we get more news regarding this movie, I would keep an open eye out on this film. Yeah, good call, good call. Uh, let's see. I'm really excited to see Cherry getting his own feature film over at Sony. I love Hair Love, uh, so it's about time to that he gets his own film that focuses on Tut. The last time I watched something that is related to Tut is a miniseries that stars Ben Kingsley, and boy, that one sucked. Again, another one starring a white person. <laughs> uh, for this one, however, I would be down to see this film with the future text stuff uh, that was mentioned. It's something I've never seen before, so I hope Cherry uh, can do something good for Tut. All right, so I'll go and read uh, one more comment. Um, has, I, has it been this one? I'll go with this one. I'm quite curious to see what Cherry has in store with this film. Uh, the way it's described with magic and music, it almost sounds like it'll be the same like Hamilton. Uh, I'll wait until we get a trailer so I can form a full opinion, but for now, I'm glad I can have uh, a good insight on King Tut that isn't uh, the Steve Martin song. Oh my, oh my god, that's probably a long time ago, though. <laughs> I don't recall hearing that, but I, judging from your reaction, it's like, I don't know if I should or not. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, like, it's, it's probably back in his early days of comedy, like, when he released, like, you know, com like comedy albums and stuff. Okay, gotcha, yeah. yeah but, it, speaking yeah, of musicals, yeah, yeah, I would definitely like to see this as a musical. That would, and I mean, technically... Um, you, you know, the irony of mentioning that, oh, what if this could be like Hamilton? Like, technically, they're not far off because Sony does have one project that is coming up that is a musical called Vivo, and that actually has some music by Lin-Manuel Miranda. And I'll say right now, uh, that is actually my most anticipated animated film from Sony Animation so far, debatably even more than Spider-Verse 2, actually. Yeah, I did hear about that. That is very intriguing. Yeah, really I, I'm surprised I've yet to hear anything more from it though. Like, I'm, I'm wondering, it's like, where, where, where are the updates from it? I want, I want to see some new stuff Probably. coming from this Vivo movie. I'm sure they'll release news eventually, but I'm hoping like they don't drop the project completely. Oh, but... I hope so, because ironically, that wouldn't be the first time. It was originally a DreamWorks project, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, it started yeah, it started out at DreamWorks. They were trying to make this movie, then it got dropped. 
And then Lin-Manuel Miranda moved it to Sony Animation, and now they're currently making the movie, and we don't know what's happening so far. I'm sure we'll, there will be news eventually, but I'm sure they're going to keep it under wraps for now. But Yeah. But hopefully it doesn't go through to Bell and Hell. But you may never know. I just, uh, I just hope, man. I just, I just hope. I want, I want my Vivo, man. I want to see, I want to see yeah. what Sony can do with Vivo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Anything that's original, I'm always up for it. Exactly. And uh, with that said, let's go and jump on to the next story that we have here. And let's go and talk a little bit about Nickelodeon. Because so far, Nickelodeon has made some news, uh, especially with one image uh, that was released from Variety showing a whole bunch of their upcoming projects. Uh, you might remember the picture that showed like all the different characters that would come out of their animated shows that are coming out next year, uh, including the Rugrats, which we saw our first look at the Rugrats that is going to be like fully rebooted and all CG, which they stay true to their original style. But we're not going to be talking about this one, however. What we are going to be talking about is regarding another popular show from Netflix that's getting a, a spinoff, actually. And that is regarding Spongebob, uh, more specifically Camp Coral, where this week they have actually shown uh, the first look of the characters that are going to be in Camp Coral, all of which are the familiar characters we all know and love, but now have a bit of a brand new look, and a bit of a more newer look than I would first expect even. So uh, going down into the picture here, I'm using my source on Deadline in which they actually have the picture. So for those of you who are only listening, uh, you may notice uh, in this picture, like they are in Camp Coral. It is like, like the environment is a lot more coral based. You see a bunch of seaweed and a bunch of coral in the background, some purple coral. And then you see SpongeBob uh, riding the back of Patrick. You see Squidward angrily angrily looking at them, taking notes. You see uh, Mr. Krabs being like the head honcho of the place. And then you also got Sandy that's right next to Spongebob and Patrick that like they're kind of presenting her as a preteen with like braces and glasses. And then of course you also got Plankton, which I guess they're making him like the chef of the place. And um, on top of that... Uh, there isn't much new info that they have revealed about Camp Coral. They did mention a little bit about the plot, which is the same that we already know. Uh, but on top of that, they've also mentioned about the cast, in which, yes, all the original actors are coming back to go and provide uh, the voices of these characters, including Tom Kenny, Bill Fagerbach, uh, Roger Bumpus, Clancy Brown, Carolyn Lawrence, and Mr. Lawrence. But also they have revealed two new characters that will be involved in the project, uh, that, that are called Nobby and Narlene, uh, that will be voiced by Carlos Alazaqui and Kate Higgins, respectively, uh, in which they are both narwhal siblings who live in the woods surrounding the camp. And this is going to be a project that will be led by Spongebob veterans Mark Cicerelli, uh, Vincent Waller, and Jenny Monica. And so far, they are scheduling this to be released in uh, 2021 exclusively on on Paramount Plus. So, Logan, I would like to know, uh, how do you feel about the first look of the Camp Coral characters? How do you feel about SpongeBob's new look in the uh, series? Well, uh, before I get to that, I should have mentioned that I, um, in this process podcast before, I mentioned that I'm a huge SpongeBob fan. Like, it's one of my main influences when it comes to animation because it is definitely like the show that has like the great humor, great characters, and all that stuff. And even with the stuff they're doing now recently with like the newer episodes, I will admit, I mean, they are, they can be a bit over the top with their animation where it seems like every second they feel like they make like an exaggerated face, but I still get some enjoyment out of that. But overall, yeah, SpongeBob, it will always have like a special place in my heart. But in, re in regards to like Camp Coral and all this stuff, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wouldn't say like it's a bad idea but at the same time it's like it's something that i'll probably like watch like the first few episodes just maybe at least the first three episodes to see how it's going to turn out and if, if i'm not interested then i'm not interested to say the least because i have i have yet to see the third spongebob film because well i'm an american it hasn't been released yet here <laughs> mm -hmm. but after seeing your review of it matt 
I, I'm fr- I knew it was going to be going to that territory where it feel like it would be more generic, like a generic kids film. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if my expectations expectations for that film are still going to reach high compared to the previous SpongeBob films. But I mean, I'll still watch it just to see how it is. I'm sure I might like it all right. But in regards to Camp Coral, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it seems harmless to say the least, but. I know there's like that controversy regarding like how Steven Hilbert refuses to have like spinoff series. And to me, it's like, you know, I knew eventually they're going to do like these spinoffs because SpongeBob is this big character. Like uh, he's up there with like Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny. It's like mm-hmm. this really iconic cartoon character that, you know, for the fact like down the road, they're going to make new like TV shows, spinoffs. Why not? Because we also heard news about like that Patrick Star spin-off series. Yeah. I think Netflix is gonna make a Squidward series. But I mean, overall, I mean, in regards to the designs, I mean, they look true to the I mean, I do like how like they're presented in 3D because I mean they are they look like how they were in the show, but obviously much more unique. And I find Sandy's design to be really adorable. But that's all I can really say about the designs themselves, I mean, they look fine in 3D. I mean, they could be so much worse. It all depends how they're going to execute it in motion because that's what the main, the main concern that I have with like shows or TV shows with a with a budget for like CGI. They always don't tend to look the greatest. You need to have like the budget for it because especially when it comes to like Nickelodeon shows, like with the exception of Jimmy Neutron, all of them just seem like uncanny in a way. Not to say that. I mean, I'm sure efforts put into it. I'm not going to say there isn't, but it's just like when, when it comes to like the motions and all that stuff, I just don't feel like they do like that grave a job. But then again, I don't know much about like the workings behind CGI films or TV shows. I'm just basically, you know, about like when it comes to like hand drawn stuff. But mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, we'll just have to see clips for it. I'm hoping they'll go like the same high original series, but given the CGI environment, who knows how well it's going to be executed, but yeah. And also, I will give them a plus for hiring uh, Kate Higgins part of the show because she's honestly one of my personal favorite persons out there. <laughs> so definitely looking to see how they're going to how she's going to play her character in the show. But other than that, it's like, yeah, like I said, I'm it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there is one thing that I do want to comment. And this is honestly something that I feel like I have a bit of a concern uh, regarding Camp Coral so far. And that is regarding with the new image. And just like you said, I have seen uh, the uh, I-, I have seen the third SpongeBob movie. And I did mention that a lot of it actually does feel like it's just trying to go and promote uh, Camp Coral because like there are plenty of flashbacks where they do go back and see like the origins of how SpongeBob meets up with like all these characters and stuff. But then uh, when they first released this image, it made me a bit concerned because looking at the characters right now, they look nothing like how they did in the third SpongeBob movie. And you don't have to see the movie either to know what I mean. You don't have to, to watch the, the third movie in its entirety to know that like what you see in terms of their designs or the characters themselves, they look nothing like how they do in the film. Because um, in fact, I actually do have this. I have this image that, that pretty much shows you all the characters uh, that pretty much th- they have that same style as they did in uh, the movie. And this uh, and this uh, art piece that I that I did bring up here, this is from a tweet in which they mentioned that this is a part of uh, Camp Coral. Like this is supposed to be for Camp Coral, and like you could tell that it was meant to be a legitimate spinoff of uh, sp- the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run. And then you you contrast it to whoops. Uh, not you, sorry. <laughs> not you, sorry. All right, uh, right over here, like, you, you contrast it to, like, the new artwork that they put out, and it looks nothing like it at all. Like, the, 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 and it's not just the designs that I'm concerned about. It's also regarding the personalities that they are presenting. Like, I understand in terms of the image, uh, there have been some of the animators who did express on uh, Twitter that technically... 
um, the, the final product is going to be a lot more detailed and there will be a lot more lighting uh, that will be prominent uh, in the series. It's not going to look like this. It'll be more refined. It'll be more rendered. And I do get that. But my biggest concern is regarding the design and the personalities that they present. Because so far, it is nothing like what we have seen in Sponge on the Run. So my question is, uh, are they rejecting the continuity of, Spon of Sponge on the Run and just have Camp Coral be its own thing? Matt, you're talking about SpongeBob. They don't give a crap about continuity. <laughs> I mean, no, no. yeah, that is true. I mean, like, technically, Sandy's Origins is already a big example of that. Yeah, they, yeah, that's another problem I have with it. It's like, is it, SpongeBob is not like the Looney Tunes where they can put, like, these characters in different environments and just roll with it. SpongeBob has, like, somewhat of an established world and characters that I feel like if they were to break continuity just a little bit, it'll be like off-putting because yeah going back to what we said about sandy it's like we all we knew how spongebob met sandy how he met mr Krabs, plankton and those characters but here it seems like they're just like pressing the reset button for literally no reason i don't know it just seemed like kind of off-putting at first and but then again i shouldn't really complain too much because it is spongebob like people complain about like how it doesn't have like the continuity and all that stuff it's mm -hmm. whatever and going with the designs I haven't seen the film itself, but I have seen like leaked images of what the characters look like in that film as a young age. And honestly, it's not that big a deal to me. I mean, I've seen far worse uh, decisions like that when it comes to like character designs. Like, it's no American Dragon Jake Long decided to change the character designs from season to season. Here it's just like, yeah, there's some like tweaks here and there, but it's it's not that big a deal from my end. But then again, I need to see the film itself in order to like understand it because yeah, I don't know how their personalities are like when they're kids. I mean, yeah. the most I've seen just like trailers of SpongeBob and Gary, but that's about it. Yeah, and I mean, I know it seems much that I would be complaining about this minor issue because like, yeah, it is true. SpongeBob is never really known for having much continuity and um uh, like especially in this case here both the Sp both sponge on the run and camp coral is pretty much a prime example of that especially with sandy but the thing is for me is that like as someone who has seen the film it it's just that the camp coral elements really do play a massive factor in the film especially uh, especially towards the end because it does feel like the biggest reason for its existence is to go and promote camp coral my, so that's why I feel a little bit concerned about why, uh, like, is is there a possibility that they might reject uh, the continuity? Like, you never know. Maybe there is an explanation that could actually legitimately connect Sponge on the Run and Camp Coral that would explain, like, why they have, like, the, you know, why they have these new designs and their personalities has been altered a little bit. There is a bit of that chance, but... My, my biggest worry that if they if that is the case that they did reject the continuity of sponge on the run then what the fridge was the point of all that promotion for camp coral in the movie like exactly, honestly yeah. it just felt like a waste of time like okay what you're so basically you're showing me the thing that you're promoting me for it's like it, it like it doesn't no longer apply to the does it no longer apply in the um in, in uh, camp coral because, like, they even hype this up a little bit. Like, there has there have been several reports that the point of Camp Coral is to be a spinoff of Sponge on the Run. And yet, now it looks like they're heading towards a brand new direction that's completely different. So, I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's just, like, di like what, what they did with uh, Sponge on the Run, like, was it all for naught? Was it all wasted? Was it just, like, what, like is it, like, fake promotion? Fake promotion. I don't feel like that. And plus... I haven't seen the film, so I was going back to what I said, but I'm not seeing the film. Didn't they use, like, kid actors to voice the characters when they were young? Yes, they did. Then um, why would they... Oh, sorry, Go on. What? Oh, I was going to say, like, if they used the kid actors to play them in the film, why not have kid actors play them in the TV series? Like, they're still bringing back the original voice actors to voice them in the show. Like, that seems kind of like, why, why even do in the first place? Mm -hmm. If you're going to, like, bring back the original voice actors... Not to say that's a bad thing, but it just seems like kind of like odd that they will make that decision. 
No, I'm honestly not that surprised. Like, that was something that I was expecting. They even mentioned it a while ago that they would bring back the original cast. And I mean, like, especially for a TV, like, when you're doing something like a TV series, like, you don't want to be in a scenario like The Amazing World of Gumball, where you have to mm. continuously recast again and again and again. So, like, that that aspect, for me, doesn't really bother me that much. It's just, uh, I I'm only wondering... Is there, like, that's probably my only question for Camp Coral with the, with um, what they are showing with the new image. Are they heading towards a new direction with this series uh, that is far different than what they originally planned as a spinoff to Sponge on the Run? Fair enough. Like I said, I need to see the film to, like, fully understand where they're with this direction. Because I do have CBS All Access, so I'm going to wait till it comes out there. I believe in next year sometime. Yeah, I think they like said they said early next year, but um, there are some people that did actually mention that if you do have a VPN like NordVPN or ExpressVPN, what you can do is actually set that that up and wait until Netflix would release that later because apparently in the beginning of November they're actually wow. going to put the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run onto Netflix. Oh, yeah, I did hear about that, but, I mean, that's not a bad idea, but honestly, I'd rather not go in the efforts just to see that particular film. I mean, <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't blame you there, because technically, what, like, what I am mentioning is, like, yeah, you gotta go and put in some legitimate effort to go and actually, like to go see spongebob movie like is it actually wor worth it to actually put in some hard work just to go and check out what like at least what i think is the weakest uh spongebob movie yeah i honestly rather just like wait till tbs access and just watch it from there because yeah like i said after watching your it just seems like it's not top priority for me yeah exactly it, it can wait yeah but uh, um overall yeah like i said i'll I'll still like I'll I'll at least give it a shot by watching like maybe the first three episodes. If I like it, cool. If not, then it's whatever. It's not it's not gonna damage my reputation of like how I view SpongeBob as a character because I knew down the road that they're gonna make more spinoffs. And funny enough, if you really think about this, think about this, this is something that Nickelode Nickelodeon really wants from SpongeBob because. If you know, like, the production history of how SpongeBob was made, they really wanted SpongeBob to be a kid character. But St Steven Hilbert refused that offer, and they, like, went back and forth, back and forth about it until they make a compromise, saying, like, okay, so we'll make SpongeBob go to boating school, we'll make him have parents, and that's all we're going to do and have him be more relatable towards the children. Mm -hmm. So, but I feel like with this, this is something that they've been wanting to do for years, so I have SpongeBob be a kid, so they can be more relatable with the kids. And I can see where they're coming with that. But at the same time, for me as a kid, if a character's animated and if it's good, it doesn't matter how old they are. They can be like in their 80s and I'll still get enjoyment out of that character, depending how the execution is going to be well made. But, yeah, it's like Gravity Falls in a way. Like you could yeah. tell the voice actors are adults, but like their their personalities are so strong that you accept them even as kids. Exactly. I don't care if they're kids or adults. Like as long as like the execute, if the show itself is great. Mm-hmm. No, but... I, I I get what you mean. Like like honestly, for me, it's just gonna be like a a bit of a wait and see kind of thing. I'm in no rush in seeing it. Even if it does come out, like I'm not immediately gonna go and jump in. I'm just gonna wait until uh, I hear what people would have to say about it and just go from there. Like if it is really really worth watching then i'll consider it but other than that though it's just like yeah it exists whatever yeah i mean it's not top priority there's like other stuff i'm like can watch in the meantime or just watch whenever and yeah i mean like i said as a spongebob fan it's whatever it's not it's yeah <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> a, it, it, it exists it exists, exists. <laughs> yeah it's not hurting me it's not hurting anybody else it's harmless that's the best story to describe it. Just harmless. Yeah, I I exactly. So if you guys are ever interested in seeing it, it is going to be coming out exclusively on Paramount Plus, uh, which is going to be the new name of CBS All Access, in, early, in uh, sometime in 2021. So we'll wait and see with how that goes. 
All right. Clever name on that, clever name on that CBS. I know. <laughs> Gee, I wonder where you got that idea. <laughs> all right, so with that said, I'd like to go into the chat wall, and I want to know what you all think about the new image of uh, the of uh, Camp Coral, SpongeBob's Under Years. Uh, is this a show that you might be interested in checking out? Uh, are you disinterested? Uh, do you think this could turn out great? Uh, do you think this is going to suck? Let me know what you all think. While you do that, I'm going to use a quick bathroom break. I'll just go and uh, re read from the chat wall. Go right ahead, dude. Okay, let's see now. Uh, I still have mixed feelings towards Camp Coral. On one hand, the animation translated well into 3D and stayed true to the original art style. But on the other hand, I still think I might it might be a cash grab and only exist just for profit. As for the Rugrats Revival series, from the little I saw it on the Variety article, it looks great and, and I am pretty excited to see it. I just hope that they don't release the live action movie that was meant to be released in theaters in January 2021, but later pulled. Yeah, I don't know if that thing is going to happen anyways. I think, like, like we probably would have seen something from it by now, but I, chances are that's probably canceled. You never know. Uh, let's see. This sounds like a really bad idea, and it can only hurt them in the face. Uh, what does this mean for Keanu Reeves, uh, Keanu Reeves and the characters from the SpongeBob movie? Everybody think uh, they kept the continuity that the series had established, but says uh, they're not doing that. This is just going to see... Uh, I I'm just going to see if I can uh, Teen Titans Go situation meme humor and nothing more. Uh, yeah, basically. Uh, there's a difference between neglecting continuity and neglecting a piece of a character. Mr. Crab, Squidward, and Sandy being in Camp Coral doesn't just neglect continuity, it, it neglects a piece of their character like how Mr. Krabs was once in the Navy or... Oh, okay, so you're back? Hold on, I'll just, uh... I'll wait a second until you fully return. All right. I'm All right. back. So yeah, I was just in the middle of reading it. I'll just repeat it. Uh, there's a difference between neglecting continuity and neglecting a piece of character. Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Sandy being in Camp Coral doesn't just neglect continuity. It neglects a piece of their character, like how Mr. Krabs was once in the Navy or a pirate, or just uh, founding the Krusty Krab when he, wa he and Plankton were best chums. I heard the people writing and uh, uh, writing an explanation on Sandy's involvement, but even still, it's not worth it. I'm, st I'm just uh, not excited to see the show. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I I will admit, even though like I I jokingly about like how bunch of a con, I do have that big issue where shows just don't care at all about like continuity because if you want me to be invested with these characters like for years, you gotta have at least have some like knowledge like oh this happened in the past before because that's the same problem that I have with The Simpsons where I get that that show's been on for like what, 100 years at this point? <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's like, they could have, like, wouldn't hurt to, like, have have some knowledge about, like, a certain past. Like, it'll, it'll be, you'll be surprised how often I get annoyed where a certain character will, will forget this character even though they met, like, countless times before in the past. And it's just, like, it's just annoying to deal with. But, again, it's, yeah, I can see, we're, yeah, I can get really annoyed by that. So I definitely agree what he, they had to say there because you gotta have, like, some kind of like I said, this ain't the Looney Tunes. You can't put them in, like, different scenarios with different episodes. It's like they have, like, the established world. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm honestly not that excited. Personally, the more I think about it, the more I feel people are right about Nickelodeon disrespecting Steven Hillenburg's le legacy. I love the older episodes of SpongeBob, but I feel Nickelodeon is now milking it until it's bone dry and is now hurting Nickelodeon's reputation. Also on a side note, do you think the Rugrats reboot will air on Nickelodeon or air exclusively on CBS All Access or soon to be called Paramount Plus? Uh, I think Nickelodeon? Maybe? I think they're going to, because they did mention that they are going to release it. But I think they could, I mean, I want to hurt them to like make a little last minute decision to do air it on CBS Access, because, I mean, I want to be, because, yeah, Kim Pearl was supposed to release on Nickelodeon, but they decided to move to Paramount Plus. So I wouldn't be surprised if they make that same decision. Mm -hmm. But going back on the Rugrats thing, uh, really briefly, um, I did see that image. Yeah, they are definitely being. It is true to the, how these characters look, and I do like how they stay true to the character while presenting them in CGI. Mm -hmm. And 
I will say this: I don't, I didn't see Angelica in that picture, but it's honestly for the best because I really hate her as a kid. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think mean, I, I think it, most people do. In, in the words of Kat, you're supposed to not like her, but they could at least make her somewhat likable. Like, come on. There are those <laughs> there are those rare episodes. I I will give them that. Like, I remember oh, seeing yeah, a few sure. episodes where like they did legitimize Angelica as a as a character, but. Then again, when it comes to Angelica, I think Ken Icarus be- said it best that I also like to call her Fanny because every time she's on screen, she acts like a Fanny. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I love that YouTuber. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm going to avoid any comments on Hillenburg, but that still, man, I guess the designs are okay, but the way they're rendered, man, they look... Um, oh, the way they rendered them look like uh, the rendered you see characters on Nickelodeon land up to uh, uh, up at the Pleasure Beach in England. Maybe the final rendering of the show will be pretty good, uh, but for now, I'm not all that excited. But one thing's for sure, it's probably going to wind up better than whatever's going on with the Wonder Park series. I think that's dead. I think oh, yeah. they dropped the ball on that. <laughs> it's gone. I, I, I think they let that go after like yeah. it flopped so hard. Yeah, didn't they release a trailer for that, like, afterwards? Yeah, I think, like, it, they... I, I think, from what I've heard, they released only a, they only released a trailer on the, on the DVD and Blu-ray of Wonder Park, and that's oh it. God. I don't know if they, if they've done anything else since. Do you think it would be, like, Dumbo 2, which they released a trailer, but it never got released? Oh, <laughs> most likely at this point. <laughs> most likely. I would be... Yeah. Oof. But yeah, going back to what he said about the render, like I said, it all depends what budget they got for making the animation. Because I feel the okay. So the only CGI show that I think does a really great job in in recent years is Miraculous Ladybug. Because I feel like they have like the right balance of making that show look great in CGI. But like I said, it all depends if they have the money to make it look great. So mm-hmm. we'll just have to. We'll just have to wait to see when the trailer release to see how it is. Because they've been showing, like, lots of images lately, but we just got to see in motion. Yeah, and they did say that for now that, uh, they, like, some, uh, like I said before, some animators even said that the picture that we saw is not the official look of the movie. That apparently it will be more rendered, there will be more lighting, there will be more textures, there will be more detail into it. So this is not the final look that we got right now. And also one more thing I want to mention is that another great example is the Tales of Arcadia saga on Netflix. I mean, technically you could argue that they already got the budget because of uh, the fact that it's from DreamWorks Animation. But still, that's another great example of an animated series uh, with great computer animation. Gotcha. I haven't seen it, but... Yeah, oh, it, it's worth it, dude. It's, 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 a great, it's, it's great so far, especially with Troll Hunters. It's great. All right, I'll, I'll read. Your word for it. I'll read one more comment before we jump into the last story. This sounds like a. Uh, oh no, wait, no, I've already said that one. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go with. Uh, yeah, I'll go with this. To be honest, the image is fine, but I'm not interested in the show itself. But at least the promo picture is better than the 2D Thomas promo picture. I don't know. I'm not a Thomas fan, and like I've got so many people requesting me to talk about it, but it's like I don't know Thomas, so I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't even know what Thomas is, so yeah, I got nothing to say there. <laughs> the train, the blue choo choo train. You know the blue choo choo train? Oh, t- oh, that Thomas. Yeah, that Thomas. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a no- like a random character named Tom. Nah. Uh, <laughs> okay. That no, we're sense. talking about the Thomas Jefferson animated series. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, beast, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But with that said, though, I think it is time that we're going to get into the grand finale. And oh, man, do we have a grand finale for you? Because this is something that I found just yesterday. And, um,. It's quite an unbelievable sight to behold. Lo- just wondering, Logan, how did you feel when I shared you uh, this little discovery I did? Just from the thumbnail alone, I was like, really? Like, I was like, huh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, it took me by surprise that it's even a thing. 
<laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And um, like chances are, if you are listening and watching this, you guys may not know what I'm talking about, or you probably are familiar with what I'm saying, but um, I'm just saying it right now. Brace yourselves, because it is time we're going to be watching another trailer, and it shall be for a movie that is called, I kid you not, Bobbleheads the Movie. Yes, it is real, and let's check it out. Unbelievable. Hold on. All right, there we go. You're playing at a time like this? <laughs> when the family's gone, our humans have gone AWOL! Why are we standing here? <laughs> the bobbleheads are on. Let's not let our prototypes give us a big head. Oops, too late. Hiya! Meet Ikiyoi. Help me! Mm. Kalani. <laughs> Deuce. <laughs> And Purbles. I'm done residing with inferiors. With guest star Cher. Hey, Bubbles, how's it going? In a brand new adventure. Anybody home? They're attempting to penetrate the perimeter. The key? Stand back. I'll extinguish them. Take that, intruders. With two uninvited guests. Ooh, la la. <laughs> Certainly beats living in a cramped double wide. Time to shake things up. Stop that bubbling! Earl. Lord made dirt, it don't hurt. Binky. Trey Magnifique. It's our duty to defend the house. Let's go, team. Yeah! yeah. This thing's safe. They're cool. Absolutely not. Ah. Well, looky here. They're courageous. <laughs> They're collectible. Shout it out. Where's the party? Mm. I want fun and I'm not Bobbleheads the movie. Available on DVD and digital December 8th, rated PG. Bobble hug. Come on, break it down. And yep, that is a real thing. What you have witnessed is Bobbleheads the movie. Coming to home media and later on streaming services. Logan, how do you feel? Well... You know what they say about people with big heads? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> you don't want to know. Okay, good. <laughs> um, well, I heard dumber ideas for a movie. <laughs> um, honestly, I was not expecting to make a movie out of this. I mean, there could be worse ideas, but honestly. But to me, it just feels like a very, 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 very very generic film i feel like i mean it's directed video i don't know what else to expect i mean it's unique that they're making a movie based on bullets but okay <laughs> what what do you think honestly i look at this and it's just like it, it, it's still one of those things that it is hard to process in my head but like so far yeah, I, I do agree with you. It does look like a very bland and generic animated film. It's basically, it, it's like if you mix Toy Story with Home Alone. Like, you got the whole plot line of the toys coming to life when no one's there. And then, like, you also got the Home Alone aspect when you got two invaders uh, getting in the house. And, like, it's up to them to try to get them out of it. So, you got that combination. But... It's just the idea of, like, the fact that they're doing a Bobbleheads movie. It sounds like a last-minute, desperate idea that they were trying to pull off. It's as if that the create It's as if, like, the producer was in a meeting with an executive, and the executive asked them, Okay, what's the next idea for an animated film you want to do? And the, the producer had no idea. They were just completely clueless. And they were looking around the desk to see any ideas. Like, they were like, uh, 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 Bobbleheads? Bobbleheads? An animated film on Bobbleheads? All right, let's do it. Here's, a mi here's millions of dollars. All right, go make my movie. But oh, I will say this, though. Do you want to know something even crazier about this movie? Have What's you, just out of curiosity, have you researched who is involved with the film? When it comes to making it? No. Yes. The most I've done is just like look up the voice actors, which is pretty obvious since they like displayed them on screen, but. Oh, no, I mean, 
<laughs> oh, you yeah. would be surprised, man. Well, I guess I'll go and start off with the producer, actually. It is a... It is actually produced by a man who is known as Lawrence Kasanov or Larry Kasanov. Is that a name that is familiar? I feel I heard that name before, but elaborate. Does the does the movie Food Fight ring a bell? Oh, that guy. <laughs> He's the producer. Oh, but that's nothing. That is nothing though. Then there is the director of the film. And this is a name I know you are familiar with. And I think you would be shocked by it as well. This movie is directed by none other than Kirk Wise. What? <laughs> yes, Kirk what? Wise. The same Kirk Wise that directed Beauty and the Beast and Atlantis The Lost Empire along with Gary Trousdale. That Kirk Wise. So this I mean, is a bobbleheads movie directed by Kirk Wise and produced by the guy who made Food Fight. We all gotta make a living somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but I, talking about like a director from the greatest animated film ever, coming and from the producer from the worst animated film ever, put them together and you get a mixed bag. You get. I was not expecting that team up. <laughs> you you get bobbleheads the movie. That's basically what happened. <laughs> One thing, by the way, I gotta mention that is actually kind of unintentionally hilarious in the part of the trailer. Probably the most memorable part is the fact that a major promotional element, like if the like if if the if the uh, concept of an animated bobbleheads movie isn't enough, then maybe the special guest star that they got. Could be a major factor. The fact that they got share. No, 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 no. Sorry, scratch that. They got guest star share because they keep promote. You look at the trailer. They keep promoting that. Like you look into this, even like in the credits at the end, they mentioned that like you know everybody is voiced there. Like they got uh, Karen Fukuhara. They got Brenda Song. They got Julian Sands. They got Jennifer Coolidge. And then they got. And then it mentions with guest star share. So you can't like, just mention they got Cher. They got guest star Cher. Like, what kid today will know who Cher is? Like, I can understand if they're promoting, like, I don't know, like Justin Bieber or whoever's popular nowadays. But Cher? It's like, I mean, cool for the parents to like, but I doubt any parents will care about this film. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it may, like, I kind of get why Cher was in, like, Mamma Mia, here we go again, because that's kind of like her talk, like that, that's the target audience. Like people right. who would want to watch a sequel to Mamma Mia are most likely the same kind of people who would, wa who would listen to Cher nowadays. That and here, sense. however, it's like, that's your biggest catch. That's the biggest thing you're promoting is the fact that you got Cher for an animated I mean film about bobbleheads. You think they'll promote more of like like Brenda's song since she's in that uh, Disney Channel show at Phoebe or uh, that what uh, Karen who I just realized she is the same actress that played Katana and Suicide Squad. Like you think they'll like have, you'll like promote them more than Cher. <laughs> I don't know. It's that's like weird. <laughs> yeah, but you know, one thing I'll be honest, I gotta say that like, yeah, it's such an incredibly stupid idea, but there is a part of me that like I can't really hate it all that much because you know that this is the kind of movie that like the the creators of it and the people who worked on it, they must be self aware of what they're doing. Like even with Kirk Wise, he must have known when doing this like. When he's working on it, he's like, oh, this is stupid, but at least I'm getting a paycheck out of it. Like, they must be aware. Right. Like, I know this might sound like a weird conspiracy theory, but I do feel like this is the kind of feature that feels like it was, it was made to, like, they want to make this to be, like, the next Emoji movie. Like, this is the kind that they're hoping that, like, the stupidity of it and maybe, like, growing this internet brand of hate that it would grow into some popularity. Like, already when people, like, brought it up, the first thing they would think about is that, like, this, like, they, they would think that, yeah, this would probably make a potential strong review for someone like uh, Pan Pizza or Saber Sparks. Like, I even saw oh, yeah. the chat wall that, uh, like, I saw in the chat wall, people even brought up that this seems to be, like, the kind that 
they would immediately expect Saber Sparks to go and make a, a Saber Spark to go and make a review on. So looking into this, like I, I feel like it is the kind that they have to be self aware that this is a pretty stupid film, and it's not like they're really trying to be something extravagant. They're not turning this into a major franchise. I mean, it's only made to be released exclusively on like um, on just like directive video, directed DVD, and um, even like come like just be on streaming services. So, right. like, there is a part of me that can't really hate it too much, and I will say, like, even in terms of the animation, it's not that bad it's not like norm of the norm or, or or food fight levels of like unbearable to watch oh, like no, i would passable. say I, I, I be, at best it's fine for what they want to do especially for an animated film about bobbleheads like it, it right. serves its job at least no it's funny you mentioned uh, the emoji movie thinking if there's one thing i'll give this movie credit as they're using something that it's not going to be outdated. Like Bobbleheads has been around for years and it's a product that you can tell like it could be timeless, but it's not like they're using like a movie based on emojis or silly bands or apparently they're making a Funko Pop movie in the future. Mm. Like they're not using a product that you know is going to be dated in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's that... like yeah, yeah that... that's like the only positive I can think of, say about that. It's like they're using something that you know will be around for, like, years. Yeah, that is true. Like, I'm surprised you even found that one positive thing to say about <laughs> Bobbleheads the movie. Like, that, yeah. that that is true. It is just this, um, like, at, at least, like, Bobbleheads will be around forever. Like, they're, yeah, they're not really that popular, but at least it is kind of like a timeless product, unlike the Emoji movie where you know, like... Already, it's completely dated, especially, like, with the references to, like, Just Dance or Candy Crush. Like, that, right. that thing is already that thing is already old. It's outdated. It's a product of its time, even. Or, debatably, even when it was released, it was, it, it was already outdated. So, like, uh, yeah, there is that. But overall, it's just, like... Like, it's... Uh, I wouldn't say, like, it looks terrible. I don't think it's gonna make it on many people's list of, like, the worst animated film ever made. Oh, no. It's not... It's not on the level of, like, Troll Land or something. But it's, like... It's just a, a bland animated feature with, like, a stupid novelty. And it's, like... It's the kind of thing that you see that it exists. It will get a rise out of people. And then, like, we could just quickly move on. Like, for the most part, I'll give it credit. Also, like, one positive thing that I could say is that... You know, it's harmless. That's the thing. Yeah, it's like, exactly. it's not, it doesn't seem like a desperate cash grab. It does look harmless at best. Yeah, I can think of like plenty animated films are like the absolute worst. This one, it's like, it's there. I mean, as, as I watch it, I don't think it's like bad. It's just more safe and generic. That's the most I can really say about it. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it could be like a good time waster for your kids, but honestly, yeah, it seems like it's, like I said, it's definitely harmless. But you know who will like this film? Who? This little guy. I got my own bobblehead. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, this was made like years ago when I was in high school. I did cross country, so still have uh, him around. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> I know, right? An official Toucan LDM bobblehead. <laughs> yep, right well, here, folks. Exclusive to only me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but, an exclusive no. one out of one item exactly yeah <laughs> but no going back to the uh really quick on the animation i feel like the one thing that would be really annoying with this film is like since they are bobbleheads they're going to like constantly constantly like moving their heads a lot which i feel like if they do like constantly it would get like really annoying to watch like what i'm doing right now i feel like i'm really annoyed just by doing this mm -hmm. like you know no, you can actually see it in some of the animation, actually. Like, if, if you look back in the trailer, like, there are several instances where, like, you just see their heads continuously keep on shaking. And even, like, when they're, like, even when they're just, like, regular, like, even when they're standing still, like, they, they always have their heads moving. 
Like even like no matter what, it's always shaking. No matter what, uh, no matter what. Uh, like I guess that's probably the one innovation that they would have in this movie. It's just like the continuous bobblehead animation of keeping the uh, keeping the head continuously moving, no matter what. Exactly. I mean, I'll give him credit for that nice little detail, but I feel like that could be ass. But it's not as annoying as them like plastering like the names as a celebrity in the trailer. Like, oh, this character's voiced by this person. This yeah. Character's voiced by that person. <laughs> and like and see... and guest star share. Share. Yeah. I feel like wherever I see animated films do that in their trailers, they're desperate for like views because they feel like, oh, this film has like the celebrity voice that will get like their attention. No, it doesn't. It's, it feels more distracting. You got them the voice these characters. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're not going to be, like, most people are not going to be there for the vo for the voice actor anyways, so, like, why no, exactly. even bother? Exactly. It just seems, like, more desperate from there, and, but, yeah, overall, it's a but, weird but, but I will say, actually, then again, it is justifiable for them to do it. I mean, it's a movie about bobbleheads. What the fridge else can they go with? Exactly, yeah. I mean... I mean, the, I mean, they could use it for like the Peeps movie or something, or that canceled Pez movie. Nah, wasn't there supposed to be a Pez movie? I think so. Like, I, I think like after like the Lego movie or the Emoji movie, like they said there was something about a Pez movie, but nothing really came out of that. Yeah, and what's also kind of weird about this film too is like going back to the like, Emoji and all that stuff. It's like using original characters and by originals i mean like nothing that's like tied well except for chair uh all the bubble cats are like original characters which you think for that kind of film they'll bring in like one recognizable ip to the mix but i, I guess they want to like play safe so they don't spend too yeah. much on like one character like you think like they'll bring in like uh like Random characters like Batman or SpongeBob or stuff like stuff I can think is out of my head. Like those IPs, but I'm glad they didn't. But at the same time, it's like it seems even more generic. Yeah, that that is true. It would seem like the kind that would bring in an IP, but yeah, I, well, I mean, like considering it is just for direct to video, like they wouldn't like maybe they would, but then again, I I don't think so. And it is from Universal, so. It's not like they're going to be bringing in any of their major IPs. At most, maybe they'll have like a Woody Woodpecker bobblehead, but that's it. Most likely. Or Minions. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they throw in like... Minions one. is too valuable, man. Minions is oh, way yeah. too valuable for a movie like this. <laughs> that's for sure. But yeah, I mean, overall... I'm not seeing this. <laughs> yeah, me, ne me neither. Like, maybe it could work as a potential, like, Animat Watches episode, but that's pretty much it. You hear that, folks? If you're on Patreon, make sure you're crossing the view that. <laughs> God, God damn it. Do you really have to do that? <laughs> uh, you never know. Some people might. Uh, I'm still waiting for the day you get to review Pan. So. Oh God, I would love to do that. Any like anyone who would request me that I would immediately do that as a top priority. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, boy, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. So if you guys are somehow interested in seeing this movie, just remember. It's going to be coming out on December 8th on DVD and digital, and soon it will be uh, somewhere on Netflix or something like that. What's so DVD? <laughs> you, you know these things called discs? <laughs> you know, Maybe. Like, I, 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 got, I got one right here. Uh, here, I'll go and pick. Uh, here, this is a, a DVD of Hoodwinked. Here, it lo it looks like this. You said preposterous. <laughs> that is so so strange. It's not it's not streaming related. <laughs> it's not streaming. <laughs> how do you, how do you put that on Netflix? <laughs> uh, okay, but now I would like to know, coming from the chat wall, what do you all think? about bobbleheads the movie would that be something you'd be interested in checking out let me know what you all think folks <clears throat> uh let's see to bring up cat icarus again my initial thought was what the frick was any of that 
I feel dead inside just watching that, and especially since this is from the same guy who made Food Fight, uh, I'm frightened for my life. However, I will say the animation is a far cry from Food Fight, so I give it points to that, but whatever the story this movie tells us is going to put this mock, uh, it'll put this in mockbuster territory. Well, then again, it's not really trying to copy someone else, so, <laughs> Unless you take, like, influence from, like, a Lego movie, but I, I mean... Yeah, it's not. I want to go that far. I call it like a mockbuster. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This looks really bad after seeing the trailer. The last time I can think that involves a talking bobblehead was "Are We There Yet?" with Tracy Morgan voicing it. No joke. What? <laughs> I have no idea. It's been so long since I've seen "Are We There Yet." Uh, I. You. Yeah. I, I wonder if the crew saw it. Like, okay, uh, that looks great. Let's make a movie out of it. Uh, if it was cute, I would be shocked about this. Although I can't, uh, excuse me. Although I can't be mad too much since uh, it is being released on DVD, so I'll give the Lego Movie ripoff a pass. If it were, I'll be super duper upset about this. For now, I won't see it. Okay. Uh, I know I did this with Rumble, but I'm going to go ahead and predict the entire plot here. The Bobbleheads are an awkward bunch, but soon grow to work to get together. Cher shows up for a couple of minutes and adds nothing to the plot. There's a big third act uh, breakup that resolves five minutes later. Uh, the Bobbleheads uh, find the intruders and uh, fight the intruders and win. Dance party ending. The one joke is that their heads bob around. Boom, just saved you 90 minutes of hell. And I thank you for that, because... <laughs> Yeah, that's basically, I feel like that's going to be the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that really does sound like it. Um, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Nope, this is somehow reality. I'm just wondering why this movie even got greenlit. As for the trailer, maybe it's just me, but I notice uh, a lot of bad lip syncing. Uh, this movie does seem to be as bad as like Food Fight and Ratatouille, but that might just be worse for this. While those movies can be enjoyably bad, this just seems so boring that... You can't even laugh at how bad it is. Yeah, that's the thing, though, is that it, it doesn't look like it's going to be cringeworthy bad. It looks like it's going to be boringly bad. And I, I don't know about the... Uh, hold on, let me let me double check on, like, the, the lip sync, actually. I never thought of that. I'll extinguish them. I didn't know that, but I'll wait till you watch it. Take that, intruders. With t well, I mean, like, I I'll understand if there are some scenes in which, like... Yeah, it's like, yeah, the, the lip sync is completely off compared to, like, what they say. But then again, like, trailers often do that. Like, we, we saw that with uh, yeah. Soul, you know, like, when, when 22 slapped, slapped Joe around. I mean, technically, his lips were not moving when he said, like, okay, I get it. Yeah, it's common for trailers to do that. And I feel like there's going to be, like, place it. But they use it just for the trailers so that they quote, unquote, funny. Mm -hmm. Like that, I I knew they're gonna make it like a pun about their big heads, so it's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Uh, let's see now. Um, it, uh, I'll read one more comment here. Uh, it's it's direct to video, so uh, I shouldn't be too harsh. But looking, uh, but looking like a Saber Spark video waiting to happen. Uh, but I actually watched Happy Halloween Scooby Doo, and it wasn't a masterpiece, but it was enjoyable for what it was, and had effort compared to its predecessor. Hell, Maxwell Adams commented that the guest stars were also mandated, at least Elvira, anyways. Uh, and hearing that it's from the Food Fight director, God help us, and poor Kirk Wise. Uh, yeah, mm. that is true. But with that said, I think that should do it for this episode, and a pretty big and epic episode, but Logan, thank you so much for joining this. It's been an absolute blast, I gotta say. Yeah, thank you for having me again, Matt. It was definitely... Especially with all the news we talked about. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, for those people who are curious to know more about your work, uh, where is it that they could find you on uh, social media or on the internet? Um, they can they can find me on YouTube if they type in Two Can L. I all. Even though it's been like a good while since I've uploaded, it, but I'm still currently in the works of one video that I'm hoping to get done by this year. It's been like a project that's been on and off since 2017. We'll just, I mean, I'm hoping to get it done by this year because I've been like trying to balance between that and your animation and all my job and life and 
everything else, but that's a living. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. Yeah, you, can find, like, you can find me on 2KNLDM channel. You can also find me on social media with the same name, Twitter and Facebook. Even though I don't use uh, Facebook a lot, I, I am very active on Twitter. And if you guys are curious, I do have a uh, TikTok account as well. You should find me under 2KNLDM as well. I mostly upload like clips from my previous videos and sometimes like newer stuff. So if you want to meet, follow me on there, if you can, so, which by the way, I, I want to really quickly, I did upload that one clip that I animate for uh, animation look back of like Aurora and Philip about to go to bed and do like the stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that surprisingly got over a million views. A million? Yeah. Like that one clip, million views. I played a little play date in the background got like 130,000 likes and I was like wow I was expecting that <laughs> like on Twitter oh no on Twitter on TikTok oh, on TikTok oh damn yeah wow no, if it happened on Twitter I'll be I'll be surprised <laughs> wow but, yeah, I'm, I'm I, amazed I actually <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> Yeah, what can I say? But anyways, uh, thank you so much, Logan, for being here. And hopefully I'll be seeing you guys next week for more crazy stories and for more crazy news that could happen to talk about over here. So with all that said and done, I would like to say thank you all so much for listening. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, see you later, dudes. Adios.